Art is about patterns, right? So as artists, an actor, artists, whatever, we cre recreate the patterns of nature, then the viewer sees it and they're like, oh yeah, the pattern. And that's why you enjoy music. That's why you enjoy a drawing, whatever, because the artist has the skill to make a pattern. When you insert woke ideology, you break the pattern. Do you ever get that where people complain about you? Yes. Yeah. What do lot. you What do you do? It, uh, I, like, it's funny because I'll say something like, you know, inflation is a tax on everyone. And they go, you're the worst Superman ever. <laughs> <laughs> And now it's time for another interview on the Babylon Bee Podcast. Hot on the heels of the second largest bank failure in U.S. history and the eighth interest rate hike within a 12-month period, 186 more banks are at risk of collapsing. Your bank could be next unless the Fed does what they just did back in March and prints $300 billion out of thin air, making your dollar worthless. Not to mention the recession risk that could have a significant impact on your investment and retirement accounts. Take our advice and protect your financial future with something real, like gold and silver, from my friends at Allegiance Gold. Allegiance Gold can help you protect your IRA or 401k with physical gold and silver. And if you prefer, you can have it delivered securely right to your front door. Since the beginning of time, there is only one universal currency that is always of value, and that's gold. Allegiance Gold has the highest ratings in the industry, five stars with TrustLink, a AAA rating with the Business Consumer Alliance, and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. You can invest with confidence because of the quality and service of Allegiance Gold. Get up to $5,000 in free silver on a qualifying purchase when you visit protectwithb.com today. That's protectwithbee.com. Or give them a call at 844-790-9191. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this is the interview show uh, with me, Jared LeMaster, and this is Adam Yenser. Yep. And with us today, we have um, you two guys. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Yes, I'm uh, Gabe El Taib. I'm a uh, former artist at DC Comics, all that. I've moved on to Greener Pastures at BigManComics.com. And I'm here with uh, my good friend, a guy I could beat physically one-on-one. -on -one. We established that out before the show started. Yeah. Uh, the great uh, Superman himself, Dean Kane. That's awesome. me. This I is am, Dean Kane. Yeah. I'm Dean Kane, and I'm glad you're wearing me on your shirt. I know it doesn't yeah. look like me, yes. not nearly Asian enough. However, <laughs> that's right. You're American, like half Asian, aren't you? Uh, quarter Japanese. Well, quarter Japanese. You're Hapa. So, yeah, I'm Hapa. I told you, 100. Yeah. Hapacito. 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 You're like a little, little like a little Hapa. A little Hapa. Well, Tanaka is my given name. So is it really yeah, Tanaka? So I would have run around as Tanaka. Of course, on social media, when people figured that out, somebody said something about me. You know, something about not having a. Have, about time for a non-white Superman. I was like, hmm. you're like, we did, we did uh, we? Uh, it's time for a black justice. You know, like yeah, it's like <laughs> that's it. There's, uh, been, there's been, there's been, there's been a, a few. Yeah. Black. Okay. First, uh, yeah, 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 that happened. Um, and so the same <laughs> thing happened there. And I was like, well, no, I'm, you know, part Japanese and whatever. And and uh, someone's like, oh, but yeah, you changed your name from Tanaka. You wanted to whitewash it. I was like, I, I got adopted at four years old. I didn't really have a really? choice. Yeah. So that's why my name went to Kane. Yeah. So you were Tanaka, then Kane. Then Kane. That's very well. And you mentioned this shirt. I wanted to kind of point that out. So this shirt was drawn. This is by you. The, yes, you, you I made drew this that. shirt. Yeah, and actually. Yeah. So and proud, DC American Comics, and proud. They, they ditched that uh, saying for Superman: Truth, Truth justice, justice in the American, American way. way. Yeah. Give me a chin, show me a coke. I, I could have said so. That, that says it on there. It says American <laughs> and proud of it. Uh -huh. And then in Latin underneath, it says Truth, Justice, in American way. In Latin, right underneath that. Uh, this is America. Speak English, please. Speak English, please. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this is America. We speak, 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 speak Unum. Speak American. Latin. We speak American here. That's right. That's right. We do have e That's pluribus right. unum on our, our money. I'm That's just saying true. that is there. That's so true. There is kind of a Latin heritage. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, you know. Well, this is really cool, though. And actually, he has a lot of shirts. You have a lot of shirts. That you, and you, I'm this wearing, was this sort of blew me away. Can it. I say this? Because this blew me away. So he created the Anti-Socialist Social Club. If you guys have seen those shirts around, I've seen them around all over. Right. And you made this. It's mine. That's a, you must be making so much money. I make, I, I do good. God that's capitalism. That's capitalism. Which isn't on the shirt. Uh, no, that's right. right. <laughs> communism, we'd all be in our gray jumpsuits, fight, fighting for the loaf of bread. Waiting in line for in bread. Yep. Room. <laughs> Gosh, that's crazy. Gabe, you were here once before. We had, I, I think yes. it was one of the best conversations we had on the podcast. Thank was you. About, uh, you know, the way the, the woke ideology is interfering with art and creativity. And oh, yeah. it was just, it was such a wonderful, your your take on it was, was awesome. Yeah. I got so, so, so much. Very amazing. excited to have you back. Thank yeah. you. I really love being Which here. is not happening anymore. Uh, they've they've corrected that. Say, <laughs> oh, <"Yeah."> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's, it's not. I would say yeah. they they are driving into the skid. Is what? Uh, no, that's what you're supposed to do. I don't know. You're supposed to turn yeah, into the skid. That's right. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to not turn away. Right, right. From the skid. Yeah. yeah, they're Tokyo drifting right off the cliff. Is what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Tokyo so, uh, drifting. What number was that? Was I think that it was number three? Three. 
Uh, I think so. Three, have you guys watched four. all those? Have you guys no. watched all the? I stopped uh, when I couldn't count on one hand. No. You know, I've only watched like 20 minutes of one where Paul Walker pulls one of the guys into guard as jujitsu. Yeah, he was like using jujitsu. I saw the most recent one, and that's the only one I've ever seen. Wow. Right? Yeah. Just picking up at the end. Yeah. And I, and I saw it in the, uh, it was the first time I went to one of those 40 movie theaters where it's like oh, the, yeah. the seats shake and they spray water at you and there's oh, wow. smoke effects. And all of that made sense. But then there's also, anytime there's a fight or an explosion, there's this little like plastic like wet noodle thing in this, at the seat and it just slaps your legs. And I don't know what the point of any anytime there's a fight scene, that's how they that's how they, it just goes. I've been in a couple fights. I don't understand. Day, I don't like. understand what that slap? sensation's yeah. supposed to be. The wet noodle yeah, slap. The wet noodle slap. Yeah. I, I yeah. I think that's a. I think you were in the wrong theater. Yeah. 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 What kind of theater was? How I think about there's a, there's a guy down there. Oh golly. Jeez. The wet noodle guy. It was, it's very weird. Yeah. Can you imagine? It was like they, a spaghetti noodle. Like just they have just, a job opening yeah, for wet my noodle first, guy. My first job was at a car wash. <laughs> <laughs> my second one was at the wet noodle Can you imagine factory. applying to be the wet noodle guy and you don't get the job? Yeah. How hurts. do you go home to face your wife that day, you know? Like, well, I didn't get it, honey. Well, you probably don't have yeah. a wife if you didn't get that job. That's though. true. Yeah. That's true. You're like me. That is true. <laughs> that's true. And so that's great. So you guys have kids. Uh, yes. Uh, two that I know of. Yes. And, and then one then that I'm aware of. One that you're aware of. And he's None 20. together. So a little bit older. Right. 23 is mine. Right. Yeah. And so you guys are not married to each other. No. No. no okay, because no, no. I was getting, I don't know, I was getting some weird vibes. No. Yeah. We met on Twitter. A lot of people, okay. know, Grindr was the rumor, <laughs> you know, but it was Twitter. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Well. So you guys really met on Twitter and you formed a real friendship out of that? He saw me humiliate uh-huh. DC Comics, which I'm very proud of humiliating him, of uh-huh. what yeah. they did to Superman. And he just messaged me and he's like such a salt of the earth guy. And I, I told you this before he came in this morning, right? That yeah. he, you'd meet him and he's like, oh, he's just like a guy, like a normal person, not like a snob or anything. And uh, he said, hey, we need to talk. Like, here's my number. And I called him up. I said, what can I do for you, Mr. Kane? And he's like, no, what can I do for you? Mm, he's okay. like, I want to help you promote this stuff. And, okay. you know, not so much like expose woke, sure, but like we got to make our own art to replace yeah. it. Yeah. Because this is a disaster. Speaking so. of which, you guys are teaming together to make a comic book. You guys made a comic book. A graphic novel. A graphic novel. I'm sorry. Come on, dude. I'm so sorry. Come on. <laughs> a comic now book. you guys made apologize. an adult coloring actually, book. Actually, <laughs> adult coloring book. Yeah. actually, it's a graphic novel. It's not actually a comic book. Technically, you guys are wrong. You're so wrong. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you guys have made it. I want to know what it is. Tell us about it. Tell us it. about the graphic yeah. novel, yeah. Uh, do you want me to take it from here or do you want to go? Rock and roll, baby. Okay. So uh, – we we don't like all the woke stuff because <clears throat> to me entertainment the first thing it's supposed to do is entertain right it's supposed to be fun and all that and I think too much of the entertainment is ideological right it all no. has that woke <laughs> left wing stuff Wait. and art when you make I talked about this last time I was here art is about patterns right so as artists an actor artist whatever we create recreate the patterns of nature then the viewer sees it and they're like oh yeah the pattern and that's why you enjoy music that's why you enjoy a drawing whatever because the artist has the skill to make a pattern when you insert woke ideology you break the pattern because instead of ABC happening right then it's like ABC woke happens you know what I mean and the woke thing happens instead of the thing that makes sense and it makes the art bad that's then you get one. Captain Marvel or something right mm-hmm. yeah you get Mark Oof. Wade Mark Wade this Eesh. writer that DC has having a bus crash and the mother's pulling the husband and the child to safety from the flaming bus yeah. That's stupid. Like, no, the father would. That would never out. happen. That, that's, that's no. <laughs> never happen. Right. So, um, but the angry. point is, we want to make the old stuff that was inspiring because politics is downstream from culture, and people want to know why all these stores are being robbed and why everything's degenerating and all this bad stuff is happening. It's like because people are persuaded by art. Because the thing that persuades you the most is patterns. You know, as a stand-up. Jokes are A, B, D. It's like, it's true, but it's not what you expected. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's still a pattern. Everything in art is a pattern. And that's how you persuade people that things are true. So if you make all this woke garbage, you will persuade them that men are evil, white men are all racist, and you can't make it if you're gay. And I basically told DC Comics, I'm not going to help you write and draw and do stuff like that where you just put people down. You can't make it because you're a woman. Look at what men are doing. I'm not going to help you write stories like that. I'm going to write stories about hope and love and family and God and all kinds of stuff like that. So I was working on the comic I did last year, Truth, Justice, American Way. And I was in the middle of drawing it and Dean would promote it a lot. And I started thinking, you know, he promotes it and all that. And we become good friends, just like shoot the breeze on the phone talking about family and all this stuff. Why don't I do a book with him? He loves all the same thing as me. 
So I called him on the phone in the middle of drawing, pitched it to him, and he was like, I'm in. Like 30 seconds in, I said, we could do exactly one of these. exactly how it sounded, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He got, all, yeah. he got all late night sexy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the power hour. But, um, <laughs> but uh, he's like, I'm, I'm in. And then I kept selling him like an idiot. You yeah. know, when you go like, you, you're going past the sale and all you can now do is undo the sale. But, uh, but yeah, you get overexcited and then you get right, <laughs> exactly. right, just, right. But he said to me, you like Romancing the Stone, the great uh, Kathleen Turner, Michael Douglas movie. from Michael Douglas. Right, from 83, 84. Oh, I remember it. I love great. that movie. So was, I, yeah. I told you we had like 10 movies on, on tape growing and up. Romancing the Stone is one of them? That was one of them because my stepdad the had opening it. sequence of that is so inappropriate for kids. It is. It is. But regardless, <laughs> the action and Do adventure you remember that? in that. I don't know. The, the, oh, the, it's insane. Somebody gets, somebody gets uh, kidnapped right in the beginning. Is that what well, it no, it starts it's, off I'm as a Western because it's her Western. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but it's that's a romance right. Western and she's like, her she's shirt's all the, open. Oh, yeah. and, like yeah. she's got, it's wet. Like she's like, I don't know. She was sweaty. should have been Fabio. She was right. sweaty. I'm sorry. I don't mean to talk about your thing like that. No, no, no. <laughs> Obviously I, I, you I love this outside. movie. I'm sorry Because that was up. fantasy. That was a thing. Romance is so, it's a great It is a great movie. You're right. It's a great movie. You know what I mean? And um, the tone of it, especially. Right. And it's that's funny. what he said to me. It's like, funny. Do it's you know that movie? And I was like, oh my gosh, that's one of my favorite action And it follows movies. the pattern. Right. Yeah. yeah. The guy being masculine, the woman being feminine, but she's not like a dummy or a pushover. No, no super so, smart. Yeah. So she's the Joan Wilder. Right. You're Joan Wilder? The, oh, it's <laughs> such a good movie. So El good, Guapo, dude. But, uh, yeah. But so I, he said that to me. I'm like, yes, I love that movie. So I came up with a plot. Well, first he wrote like, who is uh, Dean Cain, All-American Lawman? We decided it's a character, Chris Tanaka. And he's this real mysterious guy. And Tanaka. you don't know, you know, is he Special Forces, CIA? Like, what was he and all that? But he's your... James Bond, Indiana Jones, Jack Colton, he's that kind of guy. Good. And he goes around just bashing bad guys and saving the world and, and loving uh, beautiful ladies. And uh, and overall, the messages of the story- Like our, all of our young boys should. Right. Like all this. <laughs> right, because you have aspirational things that you want to live up to, and you see the example from men when you're little. Yeah. And I told you guys when I came in here last time, and I'll, and I'll wrap this up, but- Indiana Jones stepping into that chasm in the third movie where he had to take the leap of faith. Only the, in the leap from the lion's head will he prove his worth. I remember picturing that when I was deciding to leave DC Comics. I oh, was yeah. praying about leaving because that was my only job for 20 years being an artist. Yeah. That's how I pay my mortgage and take care of my wife of and kids. Of and course. I'm going to leave and I don't yeah. have a plan. And I said, okay, God, well, don't let me fall. You yeah. Got, I'm going to take that step and get away from these There's people. an invisible bridge you here. Know. I know it. Oh, hot, well, you know, it's, I, I know, honestly, I use that in my mind as well. So, like, I watched The Last Crusade probably 400 times as a kid. I've memorized the whole thing. Right. <laughs> like, every, like the entire, like, Julia. I could, I would just watch it with my kids, and I literally talked through the entire movie. I just said every line in the same cadence. Dad, stop it. Yeah, it's cut uh. out. <laughs> That's for blasphemy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyway, so I, I understand the leap of faith. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I want to create things with him. Yeah. That... 20 years from now, someone's in a tough situation and they think about Dean Cain, All-American Lawman. Literally, I'm not joking. I want to give that to other people, you know? Yeah. So our books, we don't have swearing. We don't have sex scenes. We don't have gore. There's violence like Indiana Jones violence. The Nazi guy gets yeah. shot. He falls over. Okay. There's that awesome gone. sound that it makes when he punches someone. Right. Right. Just like in real life. Well, come exactly. Yeah. What it sounds like. Well, it's funny you bring up Indiana Jones. You're friends with Sean Patrick Flannery. Who we were watching. Young Indiana Jones. We're watching the young Indiana Jones with my kids, and they use the same it's the same punch sound. <laughs> it's a lot of the same sounds from the movies in that. Anyway, it's great. You should see it. That's a great. It's a great show. I haven't seen show. that one. Haven't it not, is great. Oh yeah, Sean's a fantastic actor, and he's very good. Yeah, he really and a great guy. Yeah, and good at jujitsu. And good at jujitsu. We, we should have. I would love to have him on this podcast too. I want to get him on. I'm sure he would. He had to come in from Texas, though. I know. That's just roll could. right here. You're gonna fight him? Yeah. yeah. I would love to roll. He would kick my butt. He's like he's a good. black belt. Yeah, he's like he's, he's a real good. deal. Did you see his movie about jujitsu? Oh yeah. By the way, it was very born good. A champion. Wasn't that good? That it was fantastic. My son and I were sitting there watching. Yeah. My son's like, I think it's my favorite movie ever. I think I like Sean <laughs> Patrick playing as an actor. I go well, more than your dad. He's like, well, I. I it's different, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> my, my kids say the same thing. <laughs> it's, it's like, wait, more than your dad? What? <laughs> I'm not your hero anymore? Don't feel bad. My kids never read the comics I worked on. I'm working on Superman, Batman. They never read it. My no. son hasn't seen me play Superman. Oh, he really? saw like one little thing. He's like, hey, it's, he was, I watched it. He had one of his, he had many, because he's a young 22 yeah. year old. And a girlfriend of his at the time, they watched one or two episodes. He goes, Dad, it was better than I thought it was. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> that was great. He goes, yeah. You look different. I go, shut up. Get you know, and that, was that, <laughs> that was at the same time. So the WB started doing these things where they would cast exceptionally good looking people, obviously, with you. And that, this was like, at that time, my, my girlfriend in high school was a massive 
Superman fan, actually more a Dean Cain fan. Yes. Yes. And oh. uh, anyway, so she, I think she was, her aunt, uncle or aunt was like the the president of WB at one point. And so oh. she came on set and she got a picture with you. Oh, sweet. And, and um, she's here right now. She's here, yeah. <laughs> Come on in. Actually, I haven't talked to her. We're not friends. I don't know, but it's been 25 years. Anyway, but all this to say, she uh, was a big fan of yours and I always had to compete. And so it was wow. uh, it was very hard for me. He's going to try to choke me out. I know. I've got like a little bit like, like okay, you're a boxer. Your, I couldn't, I'd have, have to get you on the ground. <laughs> I'd have to get you on the ground. And I, <laughs> and I would try to stop you from getting Yeah, it wouldn't happen. <laughs> it just wouldn't happen. We'd hear that sound a lot. <laughs> You've got the shoulders. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. So. Uh, Jiu-jitsu is lethal. That's all I have to yeah. say. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a reserve police officer with Hoist Gracie. So really? Hoist, so I took a picture of me. Just putting him in a nice rear naked choke yeah. as if I'm going to get that on Hoist Gracie. Right. And he smiled. Then he put one on me. And I, I, I think it took every fiber of his being not to just actually choke me. Just close <laughs> it. But then I thought, you know what? So Hoist Gracie chokes me out. I mean, that's like. <laughs> that's actually really cool. Yeah. I, would like, I, was like, I was like, go ahead, do it. I didn't, so I didn't know Hoist did that. Oh, gosh. He's fantastic. So one of my instructors got his black belt from Hoist. So I was like, it's like kind of like a line of. In, you know. That's amazing because Hoist wouldn't. Uh, Listen, Hoist is so competitive, and yeah. it's crazy. And he would not give out a black belt if someone didn't deserve it. That's right. We were qualifying on the range for our our pistols, and we were qualifying, and we and I was his assistant gunner. He was mine. But we're warming up, so we're just shooting targets, doing things, and they're having to shoot specific targets. And there's this one target with a lot of little black circles in it, and they were telling us which one to shoot. And, you know, Hoist is Brazilian. He's, he's an American, but he's he, yeah. his, his first language is Portuguese. And so – they were telling, we had our ears on and all kinds of stuff. And they told us to shoot this one particular target, the top right. Well, Hoist didn't shoot at that target. So I was making a joke and I go, man, you either hit that target perfectly in the little circle. And it was tiny or you shot the wrong target. And he, I was trying to tease him. He's like, what? I go, you either hit the target. And no, I think you shot the wrong target. He was like, I shot. The okay. And then he goes through, we qualify. He qualifies a hundred percent. Perfect. And he's like, uh, he's 100. He was, and I go, that nice shit. He goes, it's because you challenged me. I, was uh, like, I didn't challenge you. I was just telling you you shot the wrong. You know, he was just like, that was it. He was just on fire from that moment on, which was like, awesome. I will beat you. Now. I will beat you. I, 100%. It was perfect shoot. I haven't done that yet. But now I want to because I'm competitive too. So um, that's so crazy. So how often do you act, by the way? You might say, yeah, I was thinking, how often do you get to do parts and stuff? Tons. Uh, all the time. I shoot, yeah, all the time. You're so, constantly shooting. Yeah, I'm constantly shooting. Um, I turn down more than I do too. Wow. But there's all kinds of different things now. So obviously we're it's we're in a strike. So I, I had to turn down a few movies that I did accept um, because because huh. they're they didn't get the interim agreement and you know. So the things where the strike is fighting for are important. They are you know residuals yeah. from streaming. It's very important. Yeah. And the use of AI. It's important and um, those things have to be dealt with and that they haven't been. But for someone like me, you know, those things are dealt with in my contract anyway. Mm. They really are, but it's but to make it standard, it makes good sense, and uh, I'm for that. But the strike is a bummer because I know so many people, you know, cast and yeah. I, mean, I mean crew members all your your DPs, yeah, all these, you know, they're they're just getting jammed getting and hammered. it's awful. And and uh, have you gone out on the picket lines at all? I live in Las Vegas now, so oh, absolutely okay. so not. Yeah, no, I'm not. He's been I have the buffet been, line and I the wind. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to the Warner Brothers. The wind a lot of, have a <laughs> <laughs> I went to the Warner Brothers a lot a couple times. So in the WGA, and once the actors went on strike, the level of the amenities Just went truck. way up. <laughs> food trucks, free stuff, tables, better food, better yep. drink. Yeah, it was just everything went way up once the I actors I keep getting the up. messages that I should be going out yeah. there, and I keep not going. I think so. I've gone twice so far. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, well, that's it's crazy. It's too far for me to go from Nevada yeah. there to go walk around for a little while. Um, crazy. But I support it, and I've talked about it on the news yeah. a number of times. And I, again, I wish we didn't have to strike. Um, because I would really want to be, I'd want to be working, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I want everyone else to be working and I'd love to, I'd like to, I wasn't involved in the negotiation, so I don't know how it went down or got to the point we had to strike, but sure. I wish it didn't have to happen because it's costing a lot of people a lot of money. And yeah, it's, it's a real bummer. Yeah. It's not a it's good a time real bummer. for that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's good. I, hopefully it'll be resolved soon. We can kind of get some stuff going. Um, yeah, that's good. Maybe, maybe some of us can, maybe we can all work together someday. Yes. You, you, you yeah. guys are yeah. good. I, yeah. get, the voices and stuff. I don't do any of those. So don't, I'm not part yeah. of that. I can just be me you, right you're here. You're you. This guy. I did a voice. You're voice Dean work. Tanaka Kane. I'm Dean Kane. Tanaka Kane. Um, <laughs> I, I did a voice work. So I came in, I got to play some character on, yeah. you know, some voice thing. And, uh, and I was being like the bad guy, the monster thing. Right. Uh -huh. But we're in, 
voice actors are amazing. So people who don't know this, I, I, I was so embarrassed because there was 15 people, 10 people, whatever. And then the director was in a little booth up there and we all sat in a, we all on a circle and they all had these big old scripts and things. We all had the same script, but I knew my little parts were, I'd come and do my thing. So I'm just reading the script as we go along and I hear this, this voice, I hear this like kid voice and I'm look up and it's this big black dude who, who must be like six four two sixty, And I was like, <laughs> Uh -huh. the heck was that? And then all of a sudden I hear this other, like other voice and it's this little tiny woman over here. I'm like, what is, that? and I re then all of a sudden I hear this big booming voice and it's that same black dude. I go, oh my gosh, these guys are They're so gross. much better than me and I'm going to embarrass myself. And like, they were ripping through it and she wasn't having anybody do anything over, over. And then I got my line like, Hey, come over here. And she's like, okay, let's slow it back. Now. <laughs> let's bring, uh -oh. can we take a, I was like, why, can we why take me? a second? <laughs> why me? I realized uh -huh. how good these voice actors are. Well, they know. all had like six characters. When you're Dean Kane, bro, you don't have to do that. I have to hey, do characters. I have to do characters because I'm just this guy. You're good. You're but good. You're Dean Kane. You're, so. Yeah, well, Dean Flippin' Kane. Yeah, but you can play 37 guys. I got one. <laughs> That's fine. Just the one. It's done pretty well for you. <laughs> uh, speaking of Superman. Okay, speaking of Superman. Gabe, we want to rate the best Supermans. Um, so we'd love to have you talk about your all-time favorite Superman. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a police. So obviously uh, it could be. Keep that in mind. It right. could be Henry Cavill. Okay. Probably. Uh, it could be Christopher Reeves. Probably. George Reeves. Ooh. Uh, Tom So Welling. far, this is a tie. All first place so far. Uh, Tom, Paul Kana. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's what was that last one? <laughs> Paul Cobb. <Cotter. laughs> <laughs> Who's that? I don't I think mean, I'm missing anyone. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last name you said? I don't even know who that is. It says Paul Con. I don't Paul know who Con. that is. I, have know who that, I don't know who that is. Oh, okay. Maybe he was like the video game. We're just guy looking at notes here. Never heard that one. Yeah. Maybe it was you're a missing, voice actor. You're missing a couple, though. Oh, yeah. Um, Wait, is that who? Brandon Routh or Ruth? Yep. Whatever you say. Brandon. Wait, who else are we missing? Tyler Hacklin. Tyler there's that Tom Welling guy. Tom I said Tom Welling. Tom Welling's up there. How yeah. about the 1948 Kirk Allen? Kirk Allen. And then, of course, oh, the, the, the best one of all. The yeah, who's, yeah, what's the best one? Who's, the uh, best who's one? that new kid playing him? Not That's the... not the best one. <laughs> <laughs> the best one. The best Nicholas one. Cage? Uh, Nicholas Cage. Nicholas that Cage. almost <laughs> happened. <laughs> Remember you told oh, me yeah, that that's Nicholas right. Cage? No, he called me. He They they reached out. He was going to talk to me. About it, but then it didn't happen. Dean. Didn't he compliment your boots on the set like you ran into him? That's Stevens. Well. Truth, that justice, that's one. and the American way. <laughs> that's so crazy. That would have been so crazy. And obviously Dean King. So that that's guy the other there. one. I yeah, say the so. best Superman of all time is Christopher Reeve. That's that's my personal. Yeah. That's, uh, he, that's who I first saw Superman. That was my Superman. He when was, I played Superman, I tried to play it like. He his, was so good at Clark. Yeah, but I hated Clark in those. I didn't, didn't. hate him. I just didn't like the because uh, I wanted uh. him to. I like the. I like George Reeves Clark, right? Uh, where he's just a regular dude, and you know he could spar back and so on and so forth. I thought that was fun. Yeah. I enjoyed that. So I went. I kind of stole yeah. George Reeves Clark a little bit, and I took a little bit of uh, Christopher Reeve, a Christopher and Reeves his thing, and then I. Yeah, you were a lot more sort of masculine as Clark, which I, I like. I mean, he was definitely sort of a beta male. He's definitely playing that up. Yes, and I get what they were doing. It was but, funny. I mean, it was a funny thing because he's so big and awesome and cool. That's what DC is doing to Superman now. The next one is called Superman Beta Male. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it really is there. Uh, it is there. It's uh, that would be an actual step up. Yeah. <laughs> I, the, the, Superman. The, the Titanic <laughs> thinks that DC Comics has bad leadership. Okay. My yeah. goodness. That's uh, so my terrible. favorite Superman is Dean Cain saying. Christopher Reeve is his favorite Superman. There it is. Yeah, that That's was a great moment. It's true. It's the absolute truth, man. You are a regular guy. You're just giving the credit to other people. Just, just a regular it, dude that went to Princeton, played in the NFL, dated yeah, beautiful just, women, yeah. and played Superman. Just a regular guy. Just like a me regular and you. guy that just was highly meeting. successful. <laughs> Highly, and that we're all jealous of. Uh, yeah, that's well. amazing. It does read well. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty why good. Is, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Why is Why is Kevin Sorbo staring at me like that from back here? He's angry at you. Yeah, he, he's jealous. You know Tell why he's him angry? What it is. Tell him. You know why he's angry? Why? Because there were two guys who got the final call for for Superman. <sighs> yeah. Uh, no. Yes. Yeah. Dude, when he came here, who got it, and he was <laughs> never heard here. from again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, I talked to him about he. I met him in Las Vegas. We were in a hotel and in in the elevator, and so and he came down and I I talked to him like Kevin Sorbo, and I you know I, and I was like I'm, I kind of collected myself. I was like, Hi Kevin, I'm Jared. I work at the Babylon Bee, and, and we were talking and I and I told him about Nefarious, the movie that I was in. I was like, Yeah, I got into because he talked about Chuck and Carrie, and and he said, Yeah, I was like, I was like, Well, I was in Nefarious. He goes, You were in Nefarious, and I was like, Yeah, I auditioned for Nefarious, and I was Ooh. like. 
So both well, of you I was, got him. I was in it. I was in That's it. One. He was. He did not uh. get it. So you beat him out for Superman. I beat him out for guard number two. There it is, baby. Now, now. He, Officer Wilson was my character's Officer name. Officer Wilson? Yeah. yeah now, who Wilson. wins? Hercules or Superman? Who wins in a fight? Well, Hercules is a god of sorts. He's magical, right? Or no, god obviously god. Superman. Yeah. Oh. Like, let's I feel just, like Superman's always hard to beat in those who would beat, because he has so many, so many powers. Yeah. yeah, Hercules can't fly into space. Like, he yeah. can't fly into the sun. Like, there's nothing. Well, who wins? If I threw him into space, I don't think he'd make it either. Mm. Right, because he needs to breathe. He has to breathe. What about beta male, current beta male Superman versus Hercules? Hercules all the way. Yeah, he just right. him. All right. And then it was so, over. Yeah. He would just cry in the corner. Yeah, he, might let, he might let him live out of pity. He'd look at him and go, he would feel call, so bad. He would call Wonder Woman and be like, please, can you help please me? help me. Is there a word for when you have pity but disgust at the same time? Because I feel like that's what Hercules would feel. Mm. Yeah, he would be. I think that's this. I think sometimes it's it's disdain. I think that's the word. Ooh, that's a good word. Yeah, disdain. Well, but Kevin had a wonderful run on Hercules right he behind. And uh, he, he, we're great friends. I, I love Kevin. Yeah. We just did a movie guy. together two weeks ago. Did you really? Yeah, we're always together. He's got a, oh, he's nice. doing a, a Comic-Con, a, uh, a Christian Comic-Con uh, thing called Rise Up. And he's doing that uh, next year. And I've already agreed to, oh, to that's go great. do that with him. We're, he, we're buddies. I mean, he, really, he's just a golfer. That's he what does, it is now. <laughs> when he came here, he was in his golf attire. Yeah, of course, because he, he golfs every single day. He's had nine aces. I thought it was because he doesn't prepare for interviews. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's me. He was wearing a visor like he had the whole thing. All right, let's go knock this thing yeah. out of the way. <laughs> he had a knit <laughs> shirt on, like tucked in. Yeah, he is visor. A, he golfs every oh, He day. was great. He was so much fun to talk to. So much to, fun. Yeah. I love Kevin Sorbo. He has nine aces, nine holes in one. Oh, that's great. Wow, that's really? And he was just leaving to go play the Buffalo Bills, the Jim Kelly Golf Classic, which I did once. But I was still working. He he left the West Virginia where we were, and he went off there to. Well, do you that. guys are both kind of physical pheno- phenoms. Phenoms. Very fit- I like that. I'll, I would go. With, yeah. Go with Is phenom. that the right word? It's yeah. a good word. I mean, that's the thing. You guys won the gene pool. That's why you're so successful. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, ah, you're talented as well. It was a, you know, that's the other thing. Physicality helped a lot playing Superman. There's no. Question I bet it about did. That. Well, that's it was amazing. great because. Uh, and with the underwear. Oh yeah, that's that was on the outside. Yeah, that was that. Terry Hatcher thought that was funny because she's like, you know, it's the only place. This is the only show she did where it, yeah. I was the one in the tights and the mm. things all the time instead of the woman. instead of the women. Yeah, I grew up putting my underwear on the outside of my sweatpants because of <laughs> Superman. So when I we was only a kid, stopped my them a couple weeks a couple, ago. Yes, right. of course. <laughs> the underoos. Yeah, yeah, it was funny good. how doing the press for that like, internationally. You know, they had so much fun with it in Australia and 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 England specifically. Why are you wearing the knickers on the outside? I'm yeah, like, what, what's what's going on with the knickers? I, I was like, I, it's yeah. not a choice I made. I didn't make the choice. He's, the character's been there forever. That's right. <laughs> like, why are you putting it on me? That was the comic book drawer. That's your fault. That's that was yeah. my yeah. fault. Come on. Well, man. when I was talking to some British fans, uh, they were telling me they they actually suggested it to me. But I wanted to hit back to Kevin Sorbo. Do you know how he got Hercules? No. He was actually one of the finalists to play Xena, and he didn't get it. And they said, we have something else for you. <laughs> so we got oh. So, yeah. 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 That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I okay. That. Dean Kane. We want to ask you. We want you to rank your all-time favorite Batmans. Okay. Oh. So we've got Adam West, obviously. Phenomenal. Great. Right? Of course. George Clooney. <laughs> Great. He's a good buddy of mine. So he's a be, nice guy. He's really nice. Really nice guy. He's, he's got hysterically nip- funny. He's got the nipple. The nipple thing for me because I'm a nipply guy. I I appreciate that. You're a nipply just, guy. I'm a nipply he, guy. He's got heavy nipples. I told you my my I'm, I got pointy nipples. So um, okay. we had to make the S bigger to, to cover my pointy nipples. I thought you, you said also Tape. you taped. Yeah, I thought we were going to keep that in private. I thought we had that. We had an agreement that was between <laughs> us. I think <laughs> we're going to share us with everybody. I had to tape, tape my them down before this interview. Of course they're down. I had to do that. You looked. I'm looking. <laughs> and I, was I thinking, just looked I was too. thinking like uh, now all the all, viewer, right, all the viewers are. have checked yeah, their arms. Uh, everybody there, yeah. was looking. It's got Everyone a, was looking. That's a powerful chest. Let's just yeah. look I think just the nipples. Did you have a, a preferred <laughs> tape? Would no. you use like painter's tape or is it duct tape? Or oh no, they it? they thought it was fun, so they put something on it. Would I'm I'm not hairy, so they would oh, just okay. do something that was sticky, yeah, right. and then they would. My customer thought it was hysterical to just rip it off. Ooh, that's fun. Uh so yeah, we've also got Val Kilmer. Mm-hmm. Oh. Michael <laughs> just nods. Mm-hmm. Michael Keaton. Mm-hmm. Who's yeah. great. Robert Pattison. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Christian Bell. Oh. Uh-huh. I liked him in the dark night. Yeah, he was cool, right? Very good. Kevin Conroy. So who's the best? Well, bless Kevin. He was a friend of mine and what a great voice. Uh-huh. Uh phenomenal guy. He was passed. And so rest in peace, my friend. Uh my 
the, the, the one I liked, I mean, I would have to go, I like Michael Keaton the most. Mm. Me and too. And I just, because that's what I saw. I liked him. And then I put number two, the Christian Bale, except, you know, why are you doing that? That, that, that thing was the a voice little, was a bit much. But it was a bit movie, much. The character um, was great. But Where's the, what, Rachel? The, <laughs> my best friend of that whole bunch was Clooney. So, because he's the only one I know of the bunch. And uh, yeah. I like George a lot. Um, I don't agree with all of his politics or some of the Obviously. things he says. But uh but I don't care. I mean, Obviously, I like he's full of crap sometimes. Yes. I also nice like guys. his take on the yeah. Batman. He, his Batman. He, he has a sense of humor about it. The I sense just of watched. Humor is important. Yeah, there's a great uh, documentary on HBO Max about the history of Warner Brothers, uh, the studio, and he talks about you know Batman and and, and one of the things he. Well, I hope he said this on that because he said it, I've heard him say this before, which is you got to get the joke, you got to understand that, or else you are the joke. Uh huh. You know, you got to get it. And I was there, yeah. so they were shooting on the Warner Brothers lot. We were shooting Lois and Clark and. We go in there and I wanted to go over and see, they were doing some huge scene that day. I think it was, I don't know what it was, but just massive. It was just huge. And I walked in there and Joel Schumacher sitting behind the, you know, all these monitors and stuff. George is sitting there. He's got his eyes blacked out and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, there was like another Batman over here. There's a Batman over there. But I'm like, why so many, why are there so many Batmans? And he's like, oh, that guy does the jumping. That guy does the kicks. <laughs> that guy does the, and I was like, what do you, he goes, I talk. I just like, talk. I went back to my set and I was like, hey, look, George has like six other Batman. Can we get some more suit? And they're like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> uh, have that. I, I said, can I, get, can I get the nipples on the suit? And they were like, no. <laughs> that's, <laughs> it's not in the budget. The nipples are very expensive. <laughs> the nipples are very expensive. Uh, no, that's crazy. Okay. So you guys didn't even talk about Val Kilmer. I liked Val as it. I, I actually, I, he's a friend of mine too, and I like Val. Strangely so. enough, I liked Val Kilmer a lot too. Not my favorite, but I do think Val Kilmer was a great Batman. And I, I think it's because I was coming of age when Forever came out, Batman Forever, which and that soundtrack was cool. Like there was all kinds of there was all kinds of good media around that one. And Jim Carrey was in it. There was a lot of cool. Yeah, and he was great. Yeah, he that, was fantastic. Yeah. They, were, they were great. That was a good one. What's so fantastic. hard about what's so hard about ranking them? I feel like is they each Batman has its own tone. Like yeah. even the Adam West one when I was a kid. Oh my god! It's like, I loved it. it yeah. Now I, it, it's not the one that you would compare in the same vein of like a Christian Bale or Michael Keaton. Different movies, but in its own movie. way, when you watch that stuff, it had that campiness that was so Come much on, fun. That '60s dance thing when yeah. he was doing the dance. The oh, Batuzzi. Come on, is yeah, that the Batuzzi? The pow and the whack and the. But that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that stuff was fantastic. Well, so. Michael Keaton always kind of blended the crazy. So he was Bruce Wayne. It, he was still a little crazy as Bruce Wayne. Like, you know, it seems like all these other guys have Bruce Wayne on control. George Clooney obviously is Bruce Wayne, I yep. think, in real life. In real life, he pretty much <laughs> is. Yeah, he is. But he didn't really carry. I don't think he took enough of the crazy over to the Batman side. No, I, I, no. I would say you were probably He was still correct. a little bit too much Bruce Wayne, maybe. Who's your I, favorite Bruce Wayne? I mean, to me, all of it, the best Batman, the best Bruce Wayne, all of it's Kevin Conroy. That That's the best mm. comic book thing to exist is the Batman animated it series. It really was, 90s. yeah. It's so well written. I worked yeah, with that writer, uh, Paul Dini. Yeah. He wrote the uh, the Arkham City video games that were really yeah, popular. Those are My great. friend from Wildstorm, that's a DC comic studio, he was the designer for all those Arkham City characters in the video game. And then we did a comic book series, like in 2011, Arkham City, the comic book. I colored it, Carlos drew it, and then Paul Dini wrote it. Wow. So that's, to me, that was just such a blessing from God to get to work with a writer that's that awesome. wrote this cartoon that I loved when I was like a middle schooler, high schooler. But you can watch it as an adult and it's so well written. It holds up you know? so it's well. Not, oh. It's not just yeah. like vapid or anything like no, that. No, it was the best It was the best cartoon ever created. As far as dramatic cartoons, yeah. it was the best. Yeah. I honestly didn't seen, watch yeah. it. Really? really? Oh, wow. Look at Mr. It was what I would put on. Princeton yeah. over here. But now I can. Mr. Princeton. <laughs> yeah. When I got home from school, that was what I would always put on right We don't watch Batman cartoons. Me too. Yep. I would I'm run home from school. I've been older all of you guys put together, so <laughs> it didn't exist when I was a kid. I remember it was hard for a while. They released the whole series on DVD, right. but yeah. they only released it for like a limited time. And I would like go through thrift stores trying to find it. And I remember one day after years of looking for it, because I wanted the whole series, I bought the Batman the Animated Series. Literally when I got home, it was like, Batman the Animated Series bought by Netflix or something is streaming for free. There you go. <laughs> it's like the day I finally found that it. Is it funny. was put on. I forget what platform it's on, but it's streaming now. I think. Yeah, but having those DVDs because it's going to go off those platforms. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then streaming won't work. It'll, they'll, yeah. they'll, you know, they, the grid's going to go down. Well, that's going to happen. I mean, I, 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 I mean, you're going to lose the streaming here and there, or whatever. We were, I was just in my house in Las Vegas and all that big. You know, oh my gosh, it's a hurricane! Oh, it's really a hurricane. Storm. That whole thing wasn't a hurricane. Anyway, it didn't yeah. affect it, it. It affected the TV for a little bit. My mom mm. was like, "Oh my god, my TV's off!" Yeah. And I was like, "Mike, oh, it's back on." 
click. I was like, right. That, all right. That was, it's that not was a it. hurricane. It was it's a, a hurricane. Hurricane. Yes. It was not much of a hurricane. That's true. And, well, it, and I'm glad. Let's rank or get your get your feedback on some other uh, comic book movie adaptations. We can kind of do rapid fire here. We mentioned earlier Captain Marvel. Love it. I love, uh, <laughs> I love watching Disney humiliate themselves. So I'm all for it. Yeah, Keep it's it going. Great. Listen, as a comic book creator owning my own studio, bigmancomics.com. Bigmancomics.com. Why did you come up with that name? I'm a big man. Okay, that's it. I and see. I was called big man a lot. And I don't know. To me, it's like. It's masculine and I feel powerful. like this is a very unbalanced uh, screen here. Right. Right? Where yeah. you guys you guys are like yeah. huge. If, and we're over here. We're, I, this is a teeter-totter. You yes. Guys are, <laughs> I mean, it reminds me. It, the last time I felt like this, we had uh, Dennis Prager on the podcast. And we went to, we went to his studio. Uh-huh. And for I don't know if it was a power move or what, but he's a very large man. And he sits behind this desk. And then yeah. he gave Jarrett and I like the kids' chairs from Sunday school, basically. <laughs> That we're sitting at the foot of his desk, like I'm Mr. Prager. You in your it's like it's really nice to have you on. Why are you so far down? There? Why what is are your you? name, little boy? Yeah. Why are you, are you so Christmas? short? I'm I Dennis Prager. Prager. He's yes. got a great voice, that guy. Uh, he yes. does. Yeah. I do like him. He's very cool. But sorry, yes. Back to Big well, Man. Yeah, Kyle. Big Man. Yeah. Uh, what were we saying about? You asked me a question, then I started doing Captain that. Marvel. You got excited, oh, and then I, you started it, your own uh, Someone that's doing and... my own stuff now. I am, you know, I don't like them putting the woke out there because it influences people for, you know, to think and believe evil things. But as a businessman, I'm like, yes, please mm-hmm. keep making garbage so it's easier to compete. Yeah. So I don't know. They're doing a good job of making a lot of garbage these days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's you're not kidding. Ooh. Well, it's just bad storytelling. If you think about Captain Marvel, she has no connections. She has no vulnerabilities. There's no weaknesses at all. The story is 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 just her deciding to do things. Like she's invulnerable. There's there's just it. nothing. There's nothing that drives the story. Nothing at stake. I hate it because of that. And like you can tell a story. I mean, I don't care about female female. I mean, it's great if you have a female superhero. I, it doesn't matter. We all matter. loved Princess Leia in the eighties. Yeah, Princess no Leia is amazing. Even mm-hmm. Wonder Woman. The new Wonder Woman was good. She had vulnerabilities, relationships. I, I didn't see the second one. I didn't see the but second. But Gal, Gal Gadot's did. good, and oh, like I, I don't know. Wonderful but watch. this Captain Marvel thing, it's just bad storytelling, and we got to tell good stories because right. we got to we got to tell true stories. You know, right? The story has to have verisimilitude. Verisimilitude Vers- with similitude. itself, right? It has to agree with itself. And right. That's why I was telling you guys earlier. When you put woke into a story, the story doesn't even agree with itself. Yeah. The example I've always given people is like Game of Thrones. Jon Snow. He's fighting a dragon. He's like, I got to get out of here. I can't win. And then he leaves in a Jeep Cherokee. Yeah. You'd be like, what? There's no Jeeps in this. Now, Jeeps are real. Jon Snow's real, right? But there's no verisimilitude there. It's so not when you within write the, the woke universe. stuff. It doesn't. It doesn't jive with any logic that anyone believes in. It's just doing it to virtue signal, which is just narcissism. That's all that is. Oh, it's so stupid. Right. So what about She-Hulk? I didn't I, even watch that I, one. I, I don't think watch, I, I don't have I didn't those watch things. it either. I, I watch I, it. Of course, I got subjected to the twerking on, on social media. I saw that part uh-huh. where oh. she twerked. That was awesome. I thought was really awesome. fantastic for the kids to oh, ah. it's good. It's great. consider that. What are they doing? They're murdering their brands. And they're killing their uh, their bottom line. I mean, Disney lost almost a billion dollars in the last right. little bit on the movies they've done. They're just dying horrifically. And they're just – nobody wants to watch them. Nobody That's wants it. to watch them. And I think that – Even woke – I don't think even woke people want to watch them. They want to no, just because they, they want the messaging, they're not, but they don't see it as art or entertainment. Right. Yeah, it's they're just, not it's comic It's just driving people. an agenda. It's activism. And yeah, it doesn't activism. work in capitalism. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. You know, we had one of the guys from the ADF on last week, and he was saying that they're going to start rating different businesses based on uh, the free speech like quotient instead of just having the kind of woke narrative. So, like, okay. hopefully, there's going to be a pushback. Hopefully, Good. some of these businesses, even Disney, well, not too much uh, here's, for here's you. The great but. thing about owning your own studio and working for yourself, I am Thank the God. I am the complaint department. So, if you don't like something Gay Bell Tape said in public, you can call me. And I can tell you that uh, you know maybe you should take a nap. Okay, what's your number? <laughs> <laughs> I do have a fake Google uh, number. You know, you can get the Google, and that is the business number. I don't know what it is. I have to look. It's it funny, but uh, yeah, that's on my website. You can contact right. me and complain to me about me, and I'll tell you. Too bad. Yeah, yeah, I've, so I've done good. that a bunch of times, and I haven't gotten any response right? from management. That's right. How about you, Dean? Do you ever get that where people complain about you? Yes. Yeah. What a do you lot. What do you do? It, uh, I like. It's funny because I'll say something like, you know, inflation is a tax on everyone, and they go. You're the worst Superman ever. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was just talking about yeah. That's 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 that's, that's the arguments I get. You're like, like nah, 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 but that's the kind of stuff I get all the time. Um, oh my god, which is which is so I, that's a victory. I'm just like okay, and I've won right. and yeah. block, which apparently is not going to be on the Twitter function anymore. I don't right. know, which is fine. I'll mute. Yeah, but right. uh, it's just just hearing that stupidity. It's just you know, listen. I there's actors who have. Opinions, political opinions, I don't like. We already talked about it today. Like, right. but I, but I enjoy their their movies. I would hire Robert De Niro if he was right for a role, um, you yeah. know, for something I was doing. He's great. I would work with Rob Reiner, who I think is a very good filmmaker, but I disagree mm-hmm. with him politically. He made a couple of my favorite movies. You know, um, uh, The Princess Bride, I love yeah. so much. Yeah, it's a fantastic. You know, it's movie. phenomenal, and and so, and I'm friends with a lot of people who I have very differing political opinions with. I, I just don't understand how people, or why people are so you know, against working with somebody whose political opinion they don't agree with. I think that's, that's gone way too far. And I, I'd like to see that come back. Right. Do you feel like you're currently able to do that? Or is Hollywood so split uh, right it's now? Pretty split. It's I'll hard, do right? It, yeah. I, Cause I don't care. Like I don't, I've never followed the rules in that sense. I'd like, you know, even at, in college that we have eating clubs at Princeton, right? So there you join these eating clubs and you mm. can, you can like rush them, which is called bicker, you know, where you get chosen or not chosen or something like that. People are like, oh my God, you get chosen. We want the ones you could just sign into. You can do that too. Great. But there's like all the football players who went to this one. And I was like, I don't, I want to go to this one because it was 50, 50 girls guys. And I thought that was a better go. ratio. It's better it's like 60, 40 guys. To girls. <laughs> so I was like, Hey, this is better. But that's, you know, I was in a, I was actually in a fraternity, even though it's illegal at the school, I wasn't in a fraternity le- uh-huh. legally. Yeah. Um, he was in a sorority. But I was in a yeah. sorority. That's really what I didn't know. I, I could join now. All right. Right. With, with Kevin Sorbonne. With Kevin Sorbonne. Right. But I mean, like I had a whole different group of friends there. And I wouldn't, I didn't do anything to march, it was just because that's what I wanted to do. I wasn't trying to be different or do something different. And, and, and I just march by my own drum. I don't care. It never has bothered me that I don't, I'm not doing the thing. My mom says I'm the worst celebrity of all time because I don't want to go to any events. Because <laughs> I don't want to, I don't, I'd rather be home. I'd rather cook for my kid and, you know, watch a football game or do yeah. something. Like, I, I, that's, I prefer that. I, I love my life. And she's, she's like, you're the worst. You don't go to any of the things. And, I mean, I'll go to a football game. I'll go to a, I'll go to a UFC match. I'll go to you know something that's a, the something PBR. Fun. Watch some guys fall off of. Uh, my dad was a bull rider, so. Oh wow! But I love oh, those cool. sorts of things. Yeah. I love. Isn't that, that Pap, Pap's Blue Ribbon PBR? PBR. That's, that's, what, that's, I, that's, that's what, what I think of when yeah. I hear yeah. it. Yeah. There's yeah. also yeah. the the professional bull riding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's oh, different. That yeah, one. yeah. PBR. Okay. I found a PBR. My uh, my son had a PBR the other day. I was like, I no, watch like, out. And there's. A, I was like, I go Pap's Pap's Blue Ribbon. Blue ribbon. Who's? What are you doing? What is this? And it's like I saw it on a TV show. I wanted to taste it. There you go. I was like, uh, how was it? He's like, it's okay. <laughs> All right. That's good. Thanks. That was it. That was I was like, in a Pabst Blue Ribbon commercial. Yeah. Really? A long time ago. All I did was eat a chip. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I did. Uh, Oh, the old commercial. I did forty something commercials when I before I started getting roles. You were like Kevin. I saw you. So you were sort of volleyball with Tony the Tiger. Yeah, yeah. He was my partner. We were playing doubles. I did, but I was the boys. That was I remember that one. I remember that one. I, they, oh, the Budweiser one or the the the, the playing Frosties. with the, Tony the yes. Tiger. Yeah, I remember it was that. Frosties because it was done for the UK. And it's uh, not Frosted Flakes. It's Frosties. Frosties. But I did Captain Princeton's volleyball uh, team my senior year, so it's like man. I did play the sport. So. And I grew up playing beach volleyball. My so, but that means you went to college, and then immediately you started working. Like you were, you were working as an actor yeah. right away. Well, I played pro football for a year. You played, pro, so I did pro have football. that. And then I started working as a commercial actor. And yeah. then when I was twenty four, I think so, a couple of years before I got my first role. And then I was twenty six when I was cast as Superman. Wait a minute. Wow. There's a British Tony the Tiger. No. Oh, they just call Frosted Flakes Frosties. Oh, I thought they call them Frosties. They're grand. No, <laughs> like no, can't change the catchphrase. Okay. Can't do that. Yeah, what was the what was the they're catchphrase? Great. Oh, they're great. They're yeah. great. They're yeah. great. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, like Scottish version. Listen, I love Scottish accents to death. Yeah. I'll just listen to. It. I'll just. I want to go to Scotland and just watch everybody talk. Just yeah, it's good. Them. I think my favorite accent in the world is probably a Scottish accent. The girl that was in Train Spotting. What's her last? What's her name? The anyway, she does the Ewan best. McGregor. Merida. Yeah, that girl. <laughs> that girl. The girl. She played Merida in Brave. She has my favorite Scottish voice. I like her. Yeah. The most beautiful accent I've ever heard, yeah. and the ugliest accent I've ever heard, oh. come from the same language. Yeah. It was the individual who said them. 
It was Italy and was Italian. Okay. This woman, I was there visiting the first time. I'd just done the first season of Lois and Clark. So we were going over there and we were doing all the press and stuff. Nobody who knew, knew who I was. So the show hadn't come out there. And there was this unbelievably gorgeous Italian woman and she was speaking and it was like a song. And I was just, I was, I think I floated a little like bit, you know, Flintstone. and she was just beautiful. Yeah. I was like, wow, that is the most beautiful thing. I speak some Spanish. I should, I want to learn Italian now. And then about 45 minutes later, this very angry, pompous Italian man. Oh boy was speaking the same language and it was the most offensive, horrible thing I'd ever heard. And I was like, wow. Uh, that just uh, went right there and there. So, uh, yeah. So I still love Italian and I'll be there next month officiating a wedding. Oh, that's cool. In officiating English. a wedding. Yes. Right. I will also be an ordained minister. So are you right. ordained as what? I will be. I'm not a, currently not ordained As like a Jedi or you're going like to go a, online? I am a Jedi. Oh, yeah. Because uh, <laughs> you can uh, do that, talk. actually. If you go online, you can sign up and be a Jedi and do weddings. There's Jedi religion. No. <laughs> yeah, there is. Oh, There's like a, real, a legit, yeah. yeah. Of course. If that's I show good. up and do that, I'm going to get murdered. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if I show up, it'd be awesome. I'll come back as a force ghost. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to be that bad. You will, you will come back more powerful than they could possibly imagine. Uh, I will get ordained, and I don't know how I'll do it, but I got to get done in the next couple of weeks because uh, times yeah. are running out. That's good. They're specific. I think there's specific things for being in Italy versus Spain versus being so, here. You got to so do this a lot when you do the wedding. You speaking of a witch. Uh, a bride. <laughs> you know what's weird? I, I Just speaking of Italian accents, I went to go to the um, – I went to the catacombs in Rome. In Rome, been there. There's 500,000 Christians buried there. Very interesting if you walk through there. there. Very interesting. Really? What did you film there? It was a... Lost of Flakes commercial. No. No, it was a working TikTok little, video. It was a little movie called... Uh, <laughs> I, was playing, I was playing basically the devil, um, is what the it was. devil? Yeah. Oh, wow. I, was, I was trying to buy people's souls, basically. What it was oh, in that's movie. really it cool. Was a, it was a... Scary movie. I've had so many. You've had so many parts. You can't even remember. I honestly can't. You're like I don't know one with some weird thing. I've done a couple hundred of, movies. That's so amazing. That's, some great, some not as great, but that's the. Th I I like to work. Well, well. One the of the things I read you did that yeah. I thought was interesting. You hosted a show about uh, finding Bigfoot. Yes. What was that like? Well, it was called Ten Million Dollar Bigfoot Bounty. I, I just saw and that. They, I was like, "How did I miss it? I want to go back and watch it now." Well, that sounds thing. so like, fascinating. They were, they, you know, you hear about it all the time. My brother's a conspiracy theorist uh -huh. for everything, and he's like, he loves Bigfoot. And yeah, he's convinced Bigfoot exists. I want Bigfoot to be real. I, I, I don't believe. Yes. I don't necessarily believe yeah. it, but I'm so fascinated by it because I want it to be real. So, so bad. we got a bunch of scientists, the skunk, uh -huh. and they had to, <laughs> they had yes. to, uh, Skookum hominid. They, they had to, uh, they had to find scat, which is, which is. When you go to the bathroom, yeah. it's, a, it's called scat, and they had to. We, so we had to like have real DNA, and we had so we had, there was real criteria, but we had a ten million dollar bounty if you could prove it. So we had we put these guys and put them out on these sort of like silly little challenges, but then they would go and look for everything and like That's really so cool. bring back stuff. What region and, were they searching? So we were Pacific all Northwest in, or all remember, over the yeah, country? Yeah, just the whole Pacific Northwest, uh -huh. all through Oregon, Washington, up in there. We're staying. You know, you're driving by, you see Bigfoot things there and there. The place where they took that amazing, I want to say Zap Rooter. I know. That's I what I always think of it as too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's like so Bigfoot that, is the yeah, one. That, that one where he's yeah. walking, looking back and walking. It's like we the James Bond of Bigfoot. Yes. You know how long it takes to get to that spot though. I mean, like. Five hour drive out of somewhere, and oh, then a wow. couple hours of hiking through the, you know, and then we got there, and I was like, "Hey, we're here! We're here. What if he's here? What if he's here?" Yeah. And we, you kind of hope, you really hope, yeah. but uh, the great skunk cave. Yeah, we didn't, and get you it. didn't find him. No, Did you see him. throughout the taping of that show? Was there any piece of evidence that you thought was particularly the most interesting? Or was there anything that was yeah. like, "Oh, that's really difficult were, to explain"? Otherwise, I think you know, there's the sounds and stuff like that. So we'd be out spending the night in these really remote spots, and then. You know, people would hear, and all the our, our Bigfoot hunters would go bananas, and they're like grabbing, you know, Geiger counters and <laughs> yeah. running out, <laughs> running out like that. We're hoping we didn't lose people, and we're trying to send camera crews with them and stuff. Um, but no, nothing, uh, nothing. I don't okay. think we ever had any piece uh, that I thought. I want to go back and watch the show now because it sounds so fascinating. How interesting! And the and the, and the, the contestants, they are all in. They're yeah. hundred percent positive. Wow. That's and interesting. Then Todd Disatel was our. Our professor is at NYU, and he's he, you know he has to go through and like he'll be like yeah it's a sheep you know he'll tell you what you found oh, and that was a sheep yeah it was a sheep another sheep I was but a sheep this, this big dad feet. is a homeless person <laughs> they're all over person. they're all over the Pacific Northwest <laughs> that's, now. that's right all right that's that's darn true now. it's a homeless person named Steve <laughs> <laughs> he's a Gemini <laughs> <laughs> he's a Gemini that's really funny I was in a movie about Bigfoot I played a British uh, rock musician wow really in a movie about wow. Bigfoot yeah it was a mockumentary. Neil McDonough was in that movie. So he was like a great a long guy. Time. He's very cool. Very good guy. He's a very cool guy. Very nice. 107 yeah. children. 107 kids. He's Catholic. 
Yes. So speaking of which, being ordained, I want to talk to you guys about your Christian faith, because both of you guys right. are professed Christians, right? Absolutely. Truth. Okay. So tell me more about that. And how long have you been Christians? Like, where, how did you become Christians? Why are I'll you go Christians? first, because I yeah. feel like you're going to have a longer story, because yeah. you generally do. Well, I do talk a lot. Yeah. <laughs> go for it. Get, yeah. Now's your chance. Yeah. Uh, I was raised with not a whole lot of religion in my family. Um, my dad was Methodist, and so we would kind of, we'd go. Yeah. We'd they they go can to, go either way. Yeah, right? we'd go yeah. to church on uh, on uh, Christmas Eve so they could hide presents, um, uh-huh. things like that. And we would show up for certain things and certain big, big, big religious holidays. And I was always thinking, you know, I'm going to find my faith. I'll f- figure it out. When I get to college, because I'm going to go off and do my thing. I took even that course, Religion 211, great professor, studied all the world religions. I was like, maybe maybe I'm going to find that I want to be Hindu. Maybe I'll find that, you know, uh, Judaism is my thing or whatever. My my roommate, my roommate, my best friend from across the way was Jewish, and he would tell me all these – I had to help him study for his uh, – bar mitzvah, and he would tell me all these stories. He'd go away to what he called Jew camp, which was like this thing he would get. But it was like they had – You can't say that anymore. This is what he called it. <laughs> I didn't call it this. It's their word. And, uh, I'm and totally he kidding. called this it is the Evan Perman. Evan Perman did it. So, uh, But then he would tell these stories. Like they'd have overnight hikes and you know, you know, know, maybe he'd curl up next to a girl. I was like I – so I was like, Mom, Dad, I want to go to Jew camp with Evan. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is what? And I was like, yeah, well, it sounds like a lot of fun. And uh, <laughs> then, then when I had to do the – Studying for the bar mitzvah, I was like, maybe I don't want to be Jewish. That's a lot of studying. You're like, Baruch Atah, I don't know. No, no, I don't I'm know. done. <laughs> exactly, I'm done. <laughs> but then he had to sing. I was like, oh, I can't sing. I'm out. Uh-huh. Uh, but then, uh, so I was trying to find my way and tr- trying to see what I thought and what I believed. And you have those moments of you know trying to figure out what what's what it's all about. And then when I was 33 years old, I had a child, and that changed everything for me. The moment he came out, just being his father, and then realizing that I, that I will, that I value this life more than my own. Then you start going, hmm, okay, wait a minute. You know, there's things are different now. And then when he, when he was, I don't know, four or five years old, the realization that one day he's going to die, he understood that that was a, an unbelievable time for me. It was before he, before he was five. Um, I know this because when he was five, I was in Iraq and I went to Iraq with our servicemen and women. I had a lot of conversations with God. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, it's the, that's the way it happens um, for huh. a lot of folks. But my son, realizing that he was going to die, he got so distraught by it, like his body would start shaking. And I would have to, in the middle of the night, take him outside and sit him under the, you know, the cool sky and talk to him about life and faith and things like that. And that was a real big part of my my personal journey. Because anybody can tell you anything. And I'll see kids and things at you know church. They're, are they really paying attention or not? Are they feeling that? How do you how do you put it into perspective and and so on and so forth? And then so um, with having my son, um, that became something that was very important to me. And then I started realizing the mortality of my folks and friends were dying around me and things were happening. And um, that's the kind of thing that I th- that really kind of kicked it over for me. Yeah. And um, that's and that's. Did you I, go to a particular church? Did you end up? No, a- I'm not a big church goer. Yeah. Even now, um, I do go to church sometimes, but. I it's hard for me to not look past um, the hypocrites, mm-hmm. and there are a lot of hypocrites at church, and the yeah. things that are going on. I would say one hundred percent of the people that go. It's it, it bothers me. It bothers me a lot. And my my best friend was Catholic, and my yeah. girlfriend was Catholic in college. And I have a picture of us. We were on a sort of a little ski trip, and they're talking Catholicism to me, and, and the picture is me like this. Yeah. <laughs> but I did go to you know, Catholic school for boring. a semester, yeah. and I just was watching behaviors versus what people were per- sure. you know putting out there, and same thing in you know in the churches. I was like. Uh, they're not paying attention, you know, God be with you and also with you. And I was like, what's like you're chanting. So we were having arguments about that stuff. And I just sort of found what I felt was what, what spoke to me. And that was, it was Christianity. And that was just what I, I don't, I don't hold it over anybody. If people want to believe what they want to believe. I've been to, you know, all sorts of countries, Muslim, you know, uh, uh, um, Hindu, whatever. I mean, I've been all over the place and, and, and I certainly respect other people's beliefs and, and yeah. just ask that they respect mine. And I, I, I was wonderful to, to take my son. One of my good friends from college is a Prince of Jordan, a Prince Ghazi bin Muhammad. He's one of the most foremost uh, Muslim scholars in the world. And my son went to a Christian high school. And just after he graduated from that high school, he went to Oaks Christian in, in Westlake, California. And then we went out there and and uh, he and Prince Ghazi started having a, a, a theoretical, I mean, a, a, I mean, a, 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 theological, a, a theological conversation. And I was like, what is happening here right now? <laughs> and then we left. Um, and he's like, 
Dad, I think Prince Ghazi is like one of the smart. He might be the smartest guy I've ever. Yeah, met. that I guy's was like, smart. You know? <laughs> You're like, wait, Dad? No, so I like, think I'm Prince not Ghazi your favorite Superman. Great Ghazi Superman. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> Dad, he might be better than you at Superman too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that was really my journey, and it was really about being having a, being a father and realizing. Yeah. And I'm the one who's going to have to teach him things and explain stuff to him. And yeah. I, look, he still struggles with his faith. I mean, as we all, I think that's right. mm. acknowledging that we all do is part of the whole process. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I think my, my folks, my dad's 80 years old. I think he's struggling with, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty real when you're 80. Mm. So it is. Yeah. It's getting closer. Yeah. You yeah. dead clock. She's a ticking. She's a ticking. Yeah. Figuring that stuff out. Uh, yeah. It's good to have, continue to have those conversations and, I know with our kids, I know kids do drive that. Like it definitely drives your need to be theologically grounded. Right. Well, because what are you yeah. going to teach them? Yeah. No, Why? it's true. When they ask you those really good questions, like you don't have to have all the answers, but it's good to have some. And uh, so anyway, and what about you? Oh, well, I was raised in a Christian household, so it's always yeah. been a part of my life as long as I can remember. But similar to Dean, being a husband and a father, mm -hmm. um, that really changes everything because you realize, because, you know, you're a boy. And then you're a man and you're a husband and father and you realize how serious you have to be. I'm a boy. And uh, absolutely, you're a fancy boy, not Thank just you. a boy. <laughs> Very fancy. But, uh, but I think I realize what I have to do to be a husband and a father and what I owe them and all that. And it's why I do what I do professionally, but it's why I do what I do in the home because everything was given to me. I talked about this last time I was here with you, Adam. Yeah, yep. It was all given to me by my dad and my grandpa and my go going back all the thousands of generations of people who mostly suffered and starved and were killed by warlords and wild animals and just catching a cold they could die. And the abundance and the greatness we have now, like, I can't be the one to break the chain. You know, it can't, I'm not gonna put my name on that. I'm not gonna be the one yeah. that messed up my line of people for going back thousands of years. So to me, I, I constantly think about yeah. um, following God and being close to him. And I have so much peace now. You know, I have like, like more than I've ever had. Leaving DC Comics was just a tremendous test for me because how am I gonna make ends meet? And I'm more blessed than ever financially, but also spiritually. Like I don't get upset anymore. I don't worry about things. I just realize God really has had it in his hands the whole time. Mm. And I was trying to help him. And it's kind of like a little kid trying to help their dad do something. He's like, just let me do it. You know, and you have to. And then he uh, curses when you drop the flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> right. but it's, That's just what my dad did. It's, that, it's like that, uh, you know, right. that whole let just go like and let dad. God thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I really, it's, I think the reason, this is just a theory I have, the reason God made us have children instead of the stork bringing babies or cabbage coming out of the cabbage patch, I think so we would have them and then we, and we would understand just a fraction of how he feels about us. Yeah. Because Ooh. once you have children, you see what pure love is. There's no transaction. I don't want anything for my kids. I want them to be better than me, more successful, yeah. live longer, be healthier, be happier, be closer to Except God. Except absolute obedience. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. No. But that's true. And, it must and, happen. And you think having kids will change you? Have a grandchild. You know, my granddaughter, right. big baby. Big baby. Mm. I can't stop sending you pictures of big baby. And he does the voice for her too. That's uh, right. I'm that's her big voice. baby. Uh, <laughs> so that's uh, that's her my, well. Here's the story. My granddaughter, when she gets upset. She she grows 75 feet tall and she stomps around the town and smashes everything. No. So she's a guest on my uh, my YouTube show. On uh, uh, If you're on YouTube and look for Gabe, I'll tell you about it. I have a great YouTube channel. It's a lot of fun there. Subscribe. But uh, yeah, Big Baby, she's a guest on the show. But having a granddaughter now, she's eight months old, it's just amazing. Yeah. And, and just the love you see uh, in their eyes and everything. She has four teeth right now. She likes to bite with them. Four whole teeth. Four little teeth. She sits on my knee. Two top, two bottom? Every... That's what they usually get, like, chip Right, get yeah, and she has a gap that's between true. the front two. It's the that's cutest my, thing in the world. That's actually my favorite when they just have the two. Right, and, and every morning I'll have my coffee, yeah. and I'll be sitting there and getting ready to get to work, making comic books, and she'll just sit on my knee, and I'll have my coffee and just talk to her. She's and, a good baby. Yeah, she's a, a good baby. Yeah, absolutely. Like she's just chill. Love my life. She's I love the, the most beautiful thing. And I think that's one of the things that's hurting society and causing so much woke is people are taking that devil's bargain of selfishness. Mm -hmm. Never get married. Never have kids. Just me, 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 me. And you make yourself miserable doing that. And you think you're making yourself happy. And yeah. you just have to go from one dopamine hit to the next to yeah. just stay afloat because you're miserable. And then, and you know, God says in the Bible, uh, you know, loving people as yourself, you fulfilled all my law. That's all you have to do. You know what I mean? So when you love your wife and your yeah. children and your fellow man and your people, and you love your fellow man by not making filth for DC Comics, yeah. and go make something good. That's how I can love my fellow man. And the the Or messages, just mock all those woke ideas. Right, you, do, you do mock them. No, my kids God know commands that, us to hate evil. 
He does. He does. And hate. when I get up and go to work, my kids know I'm going out there to fight bad ideas. Right. That's awesome. Right. Yeah, they know that. They but know I, that's what we do. I wrote the uh, wrote and illustrated with Eki on helping me uh, Truth, Justice, American Way, and it was like a uh, a comic book like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, all that, but it was wholesome and uplifting, but it was exciting and action-packed, and he helped me promote it a ton last year. And the response I got from people of this is amazing, something I can finally read to my kids, yeah. it's so inspiring, and like that's why God gave us artistic talent, mm -hmm. that he can act, and then I can do this comic book stuff, writing it and drawing it and all that, not so I can write filth and say, hey, yeah. kids, the world sucks, your dad's an idiot. Like, yeah. come on, man, this totally. enough, you know? You know, that's One thing, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You, I was going to say, you, just yeah. in this, in that, in our, in our project, um, it's clear, you know, it's, it's right and wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's a, it, and you see clearly what is right and why you're, someone's doing this and right. why the bad guy's doing this. And it's for the wrong reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. And you see, okay, well this, obviously he's doing what he's doing and doing those things because he's fighting for something that's good. He's fighting for something that's bad. And it's real clear, you know, it's, it's, yeah. and, and sometimes those li those lines can get blurry, but not so much in, oh, there it is. Yeah. And I'll, I'll give JPEGs to your, whoever Awesome, yes. This, so they can stick imagery in. But I brought oh. those covers there. Um, I just had the covers printed out. Because <laughs> oh, I'm thinking awesome. of doing a glow in the dark cover and then a foil covers on, that's already for sale. This is really cool. But this is, uh, this is that fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And the it's illustrator, the cool, illustrator yeah. Akeon, he's just out of control. And then when you guys publish this podcast, you guys can pop They're up great, imagery yeah. throughout the show. Oh, I, I have a it. bunch of beautiful pages. Definitely, going yeah, yeah. It's so, cool. I just saw yeah. those things. So, yesterday. Yeah, right. Oh so my awesome. gosh! Be sure to check great. out the the comic and be sure to subscribe to uh, Gabe's yeah, YouTube please. channel as and, well. And, oh, I'm sorry. Go. No, ahead. I, was, I was just making no, sure they, they like hear like it right again now. to make sure to okay. check it out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Kill Wolverine down. Kill Wolverine. That's right. Dean Cain's better than you, Wolverine. There he is. Oh, Wolverine can't fly. I guess you're not the best there is at what you do. I guess whatever, Wolverine. <laughs> Superman versus Wolverine. Let's I see you heal from what that. happens. <laughs> but I'll Try say, to heal from that. Yeah. I'll say this. If you're concerned about all the filth you see and you know people just walking into stores in California just robbing them and the anti-family and all the misery, politics is downstream from culture. People will be persuaded to believe about the world what they consume. So make this kind of art and if you can't support us and buy it from us so we can make more and we can turn the tide. I want to go back to Frank Capra's Hollywood of It's uh, a Wonderful Life. Mm. Yeah. My That's favorite what movie. I want. My that, favorite movie I don't cry that. every year at the end of that movie. There's just dust in my living room when I watch that movie. You yeah. know what I mean? At the very end, you know, I don't cry. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying <laughs> It's There's one of the greatest of movies of all time. There's just dust in the air. Dust in the air. Dust in the air. Head more. It's the moment, though, that they did it so well, is when everybody comes. He doesn't want oh. the help. He, I'll do it myself. Right. And everybody shows up for him. Yeah. That feeling of Oh, I like, got the tingles right now. Yeah, thinking it's about that, it. that thing, you're just, you I know. Just right. it, there's something about that when everybody else realizes what a good person you are. Right. And, there, and you are in a moment of need and you're too proud to ask for it. Right. And then, then everyone shows up for you. That's It's overwhelming. Right. Yeah, I'll cry. I can cry. Right. I That's do cry. Great. Right. So I cry. I do. I'm a cry. I cry more at movies than I do in real life, I think. I think I tear up more watching movies. Yeah, than me in, too. Than I, in I, real life. I am uh, half Arab, half Mexican, so I got macho with both barrels. Uh huh. So uh -huh. I do not cry. You don't uh -huh. cry. No. On the inside, I, yeah. it counts. I, I just I go in the shower, the and then it's, it's probably just <laughs> <laughs> Just push it down until the little right. ball deep inside. Push it. Never <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> but um, yeah, go to bigmancomics.com yes. and pre-order it right now. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and use uh, promo code. Uh, my wife came up with this code, Babylon Free. And you'll get ten dollars off a minimum fifty dollar order. That's and the then my time. web guy, my IT guy that does all the uh, the coupons and all that for the website, he said, "Don't use free because you're not giving anything away free. Yeah. You're just giving a discount." I said, "Yeah, but it rhymes." Have so I'm free. fucking my web nice. guy, who I love. Rich is an amazing web designer. Rich, and, uh, yeah, we you love go to you. bigmancomics.com. <laughs> you get Dean Kane, All American <laughs> Lawman. It's gonna ship at the end of the year, beginning of next year, like winter. We'll have it done, printed, and shipped out to you. Winter gives us like all the way to the end of like February. Right, it really. gives us till like March. Right? <laughs> winter yeah. ends. Winter ends mid March. Yeah, so we're giving yeah. ourselves some room here. But winter yes, is coming. Please order that and support this coming. kind of art. You know. I Please walked away from me. DC Comics on principle. He does what he does with all his acting on principle. We don't want to make filth, either of us. We want to make great art. We're highly skilled, both of us, but we only want to make good stuff that lifts people up. So we need your support. So support us today, please. That's wonderful. Hey. I actually love what you just said. I think it's great. Uh, a lot of people are in the same boat where they're making decisions between what types of stories they would like to tell. And I think it's great that you're out there doing it. You're risking, you're taking 
hits because you're not taking parts that you would otherwise have taken. Right. Uh, I've had that too, or you turn things down because you can't. It's like, well, I can't right. tell this story. I can't be part of this. Um, yeah, and I think it's really impressive, and I look up to you guys for doing that. I think it's a great. We thing. also look up to us because we're taller than you. Because we're, we are, very much we so. appreciate physically it. and um, figuratively, and physically. <laughs> we both look up to you. Um, True. You told yeah. me that great Frederick. Well, Adam looks up to me, and I just want to point that out, Adam. That I'm great uh, Frederick Douglass quote about "I will do good." Yeah, he said, what "I is will." It exactly, uh, I'm going to mess it up a little bit. I'll it's get okay. close to it. He said, "I will. Uh, I'll, I will work with anyone to do good. Uh, I'll join with anyone to do good." And with no one to do bad. Right. Um, and that's, that's the point. He's like, I'll partner with, you know, people. I've done things with people like, why would you talk to these people? Why would you? Do? Because it, it it does good. Right. I don't yeah. care what they've done here. This does good. Right. And mm -hmm. this is what I'm trying to do. And I disagree with this, but I can work together toward this end. And and the same at the right. same token, I'm not going to work with people that I really like if they're doing bad. Right. If what they're doing is going to come up and, and be bad, I won't do it. It's like... That's right. good. And when DC Comics tells me I'm going to work on a Superman book where we're focusing on the sexuality of an underage person, I tell him, you can do that without me. Okay? Yeah. I'm not grooming kids. And what in the world is your problem? You yeah. know, over there at DC Comics. Office. He just looked right into the camera. Yeah, I did. That. And that's for you, Jim. The oh, boss over there it is. There I'll it call is. you out. No one hey, calls Jim. him out. Hey, Jim. No one calls him out. You know, he's the creative director over What's there. What's wrong with you? So that's disgusting, man. They're kids. It is it's no, not I mean, what comics are about. We're joking, but that is actually one oh, of the things so. that really lights my fire. I get pretty mad about it. Leave that kids stuff. alone. Leave, you know, jeez. Yeah. yeah. Leave there's a, uh, and I'm, there's a, uh, in that vein, part of what I do as a police officer is we work in the Internet Crimes Against Children oh, you um, group. So, so we'll create a profile, um, uh, no time at all. We've got 15, 20 people contacting this, this, this profile. You know, I'm a 13 year old kid. I'm I'm I'm, I'm on my own. I'm, I'm I don't, my parents are full of it. You know, blah blah blah. People, boom, just just predators show up so fast. So one of the things people don't realize is how much how much access these predators have to your children. If you have an iPhone, if you're on these things. So one of the another group that I'm working with, and I'm not meaning to pull away from what we're no, doing here, no, is, no, is, yeah, a, is a group called True Play Games. T R U uh, P L A Y. Okay. And True Play is. Uh, run by this gentleman, Brent Dusing, and it's it's basically what you know. You used to be able to stick your kids in front of the Disney Channel, yeah. And you just know they're going to see stuff, and it was right. going to be all. And you never have okay. to see him again. Never worry. About, yeah, you never. Yeah. Which is you important. Just, yeah, here. That's what happened to us. Put them down, <laughs> then you see him at the high school graduation. Yeah. This, uh, <laughs> how'd it go, son? This this uh, this <laughs> right. this game uh, platform is fantastic because it's all you know biblically biblically based. So cool. everything you're doing, you're getting these 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 stories that are. In that in the world and getting teachings from the Bible, um, but it's not banging you over the head with it, um, and it's also it's not multimedia online, so that there's nobody can contact your child. It's 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 completely um, yeah. um, encased in in that sense, so oh. no one's going to be reaching. So if they're playing that. Your your kids are not going to be contacted by outsiders. You're not worried that they're going to go meet up with someone, which is mm. horrific. And and even like Sound of Freedom, when you see that movie that's gotten so big now, which I'm so happy for, but you know Disney owned that. They had it, sat on it for five. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't they release it? Yeah. Five years they had that film, and then it comes out and does so well, and people pay attention to it. And they, but because they they're a bunch of groomers. Well, that's right. that's the scary I mean, thing, you know. Actually, we're so against, and this is one of the platforms. My wife runs a homeschool program. I do one of the platforms that we have is that we don't even want kids to have cell phones. Like we don't want them to be have access to technology, right? Um, because you, you're giving the entire world access to your kid, yep. not not just the other way around. I mean, like you're giving your kid access, access to, to the, the weirdest, craziest stuff Ugh. that's ever existed, and you're also giving access to your children. Right. And so we we want our kids to just kind of grow up analog and kind of grow up the old fashioned way, watching Indiana Jones on VHS, or right? Whatever. Yes, yeah, like that's that's what right. we like. But if they do want to yeah. play video games, yeah. They can do that on this platform, True Play, and there's yeah. nobody can contact them. And that they're learning so awesome. things like, you know, this one this one character, Lucas, wants to go build this like he he's a they're all little animals in this one little thing, and Lucas is a squirrel, wears an alligator costume, whatever. But he wants his dad, his brother died, yeah. and he wants to be able to fly up to heaven to see him. But the other guy, other was little buddy's like, well, I, I'm not sure that's what they mean by this. And so it's, it's those things are brought up and told in a way that the kids can, that's cool. Can listen to and understand. Was it so called true cool. play? True play. So All right. True play. Check it out. Now for the last part of our little podcast, we have one, we have a gift for you. Uh, oh, so I accept. Can we have, yeah. there they are. What is yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, Timing. This is Travis. Travis. Hi, Travis. That's my name. What's going on? Hey, How are you? Good nice. to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. 
All right, Travis. On behalf of the Babylon Bee, we wanted to give you a gift that's definitely not kryptonite. Is it going to explode? No. It's Open it slowly. It's, no, it is ticking. Ooh. Is that bad? I don't even know what this is. I don't either. I don't either. I don't I'm a little I don't nervous. Know what we've signed on. Holy! Oh, oh no! no! Oh, no! It is what are you today. doing? <laughs> no, what are you? How dare you? Burn my hand. Burn my hand. What's in the box? Uh, what's, what's, in box? The what's in the box? box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Uh, oh, why are you oh, doing oh. that to me? Why are you doing that to me? Oh, look at that. How He's rude. not even what acting. What's his name? He's not Travis. even acting. I'm gonna kick his. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Get that away from me. It's Lex Luthor. Actually, care of my him. name is Lex Luthor. <laughs> there you are! Oh, I oh. knew it! Uh, I knew. All right, so. This was all a setup. So this now we have a. We end all of our podcasts with our 10 questions. Ooh. So we'll ask the original 10 questions for Dean. Yes. And then we have our second set of 10 Ooh, questions for Gabe, because he's been here before. The 10 questions. Uh, so first for Dean. Let me say this real quick. Yes. I, if you time these segments out, I think mine will be roughly half of what his answers will be. Let's try oh, to keep them all. <laughs> let's try to keep them all pretty <laughs> quick. And uh, this is a lightning round. Lightning round. Uh, you have to do it in a Raider voice. Like a Raider fan have, voice. Vato. No. <laughs> you listen to me, fool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Pretty good. Dean, have you pero ever... Es, español. Oh, it's sí, already no. Entonces, Necesito practicar mucho más, pero... Pero vivo en España. Sí. Hace Ahora 20 España, años. Sí. Sí. La madre de mi hijo. Have on. you ever met Carmen? Carmen? Yes. Which Carmen? This, uh, this guy Christian right here. singer from the from 90s, 90s and early... Yeah. 90s. Oh, there! No. Yeah. No. Nah. Okay. No. Um, are you I thought it was Carmen Electra, and my answer was yes. Have you met her? Uh, yes. I would rather meet Carmen Electra. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> me too. I was kind of yeah. trying to my, throw My it. wife would yeah. rather I met Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think all of our wives. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's good. I know. Uh, well, are you a Calvinist or an Arminian? Or an Arminian? Arminian. Arminian. Okay, so are you in? Are you a free will guy or are you a predestination guy? I'm a free will guy. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. interesting because you touched the John Calvin as you said that. Yeah. You, you touched I'm a John free Calvin will said, guy. no, I'm, I'm not. John Calvin. Yeah, John Calvin would be a Calvinist. Yeah. Uh, you can He's add, not looking at me anymore. You yeah. can add one book to the Bible, uh, and, and forgetting the rule that you're not supposed to add stuff to the Bible, what would the book you would add be? Dean Cain, All-American Lawman. Oh, boy. Nice. Oh, that's a different no. book. Uh, <laughs> it's apocryphal. Oh, man, that's a tough question. I wouldn't I wouldn't add anything to the Bible. That's scary Yeah, that's question. a rough... That's so a rough what's life. your favorite book that everyone should or read? Or something you think would benefit <laughs> Christians or a reader of the Bible. Holy smokes. That's also just massive. It's a big question. I mean, it's a humongous question. I I wouldn't I I would hate to try to what, suggest for someone well, what to what's do. What's your favorite book? What do you like? I what has the, had the most impact on you? Uh, even that's hard to say. <laughs> I mean, because at different times of your life, it's different things. Yeah, I don't have a. I don't have a favorite book. I'm not going to say Isaiah. I'm not. There's things and bits. Of, I don't want to. I don't want to pick one. That uh, no. the Dresden Files. The Dresden. Files. Okay, never mind. No. <laughs> All right. So cigars or pipes? Cigars. Yeah. Uh, you can hang out with. That's any, easier one. That's, God, yeah, thank that's you. Easier. <laughs> you can hang out with any three people, living or dead. You can't pick Jesus. Who would you hang out with? Can I pick Jesus, his father? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess nobody's ever done They're that before. They're of one sure. substance. No, what? no okay. That's the same substance. thing. Yeah. Uh, That's right. It's like Clark Kent and Superman, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wow. Uh, I think it'd be great to sit down with one of the founding fathers of the United States. Would be Ooh. great. So maybe George Washington himself would be pretty fantastic. Um, man, you guys, these are rough. I, mean, I don't think about that, like which living or dead. Living, there's pretty much nobody that I... Because there's so many people that are so yeah. great in the past. Could be your son, in the in the future. Like no, son. just your you know your son. I, well, you know. Well, he's my favorite human being on the planet. Yeah, there you anyway, go. Yeah, okay. um, man, wow. I, I don't want to make a bad choice. It's okay. Don't be no. afraid. No. Everybody no. stopped watching at this point. No. <laughs> <laughs> you said I was going to take a long time. I didn't know there were any tough questions. It was pipe or cigar. I can do that. Right, right, That's right. an easy one. Um, Ask him football questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He had a, exactly. You know, free safety. They used their yeah. head a really? lot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, one of the founding fathers. So, so let's go with George Washington. Let's go with George Washington. Let's go with uh, 
What about one of the old Superman actors? Would you want to meet one of them? I met most of them. I would have liked to have met Christopher Reeve. I didn't get a chance to do that. And that was one of those things that I was, I do regret. So we'll we'll put Christopher Reeve in there. But then I have to go back to like a, you know, I got to go way back to, to I'm a history guy. So a history major guy, but Mm -hmm. I got to figure out which one it would be. I'll I'll pick an, I don't know, man, shoot. I'll even, not even go back to history. I'll just go back to like. Sigmund Freud, because it's weird. Okay, oh, there you go. Sigmund Freud. That would, <laughs> that would teach me something about myself. Yeah. No, I like it. All right, so whiskey or beer? Whiskey. Oh, yeah? Yeah, okay. I'm not a beer guy. Not a beer guy. I'm not really a whiskey guy either. Yeah. yeah. Tequila, but that doesn't, okay. it's not one of the ores. Gotcha. Cleaner. Uh, what's it the is. first thing you would do if you were president? Woo! <laughs> first thing, it has to be the first thing, immediately secure the border. Good. Sounds good. That's a good answer. Uh, I'm sure this is something that you have. Have you ever punched anybody or been punched? What's okay. the story? Yes. I, how much? Six, got ten hours? Like that? Yeah. I mean, I you have a best a or favorite story favorite about story? getting yeah. punched or punching someone? Um, I did get in a fight in college where I never noticed that I got punched. I know I got punched because I felt it, but I never saw it coming. All I ever saw was it coming away. Uh-huh. I was like, how does he keep doing that? It didn't hurt me at all. <laughs> I was just like, every time I was trying to get him, I just... <laughs> and there was a fist going away. Um, I got in a lot of fights uh, as a younger person because of a football player. Mm-hmm. We'd fight, you know, over positions and things like that. So yeah, I've uh, I've had some I've had some big old brawls. That's good. Mm. I, I don't get hit with the right. I'm just telling you that because a lot of those guys didn't didn't stay on their feet. Oh, um, nice. So yeah, I've done a lot of those those things. Mm-hmm. I'm not proud. Yeah, I am. I'm most of you should be proud. I'm proud yeah. of most of it. Uh, one of them was saved my buddy uh, in college, um, and it was a I did not want to hit this man. Um, <laughs> Sounds and, like you did. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and after I hit him, he wished that I hadn't. Yeah. When he woke up, Ooh. he probably wished oh, that he goodness. hadn't because he went sleepy bye bye immediately. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Knocked him out with one punch. Mm, yes, very much so. But my buddy got his eye got completely like blacked out and bl- oh, wow. we went to football camp the next day. Ooh. So he just got roasted constantly. They're like, Sean, why don't you start a fight right now so Dean can end it for you? Oh, uh, so, wow. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, did sorry, you, Sean. Did you carry Sean out? You know, like they carry the. He's the, my best friend in college too. He's a little guy. So, uh, yeah. I know that's funny. Uh, my best friend in the world, the Filipino guy you put yep. in the headlock at my wife's dinner. Uh, in a nice uh, way. Right. Or, yeah. Hoist He's not crazy. racist against Filipinos. He loves the Filipinos. <laughs> okay. Love to but, um, out, truck Filipino people. But, um, that we were friends. Uh, we met in fourth grade, and in fourth grade, I was five foot eight already, you know. And he was like <laughs> literally four foot something, and some kid was picking on him, and I beat the crap out of that kid. So I've saved my bro. There you go. So I know what That's it's great. like. That's great. Sounds uh, a great story. So next question: One concert, any band in history? Who do you see? Band or musician? Holy Ooh. smokes! Wow, Taylor Swift. No, <laughs> what? you can't get uh, tickets. What? I can't. You it's can't. It's impossible. It's all you can't sold do out. That. <laughs> uh, Man, I mean, I the first concert I ever saw was with the greatest concert I ever could have seen. 1977, it was Kiss. Oh, wow. And wow. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. So you can't beat that excitement. In fact, we got up. We didn't realize they were going to be encores. My brother and I we got up. My, my uncle who brought us had to sit like a little way. And he's like, sit down. And I was like, why would we sit down? The concert's over. <laughs> and they came back on and we had to stand for the encores. But that was That's amazing. Cool. And that excitement. But the one I want to see the most right now coming up even though you didn't ask me that question, is Bruno Mars. I live in Las Vegas oh, yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Everybody comes out there, and he's so talented. Yeah, I Good saw him once. It was great. Yeah, it's it was awesome. Such an entertainer. Great show. Little fella. Yes. Little guy. Little tiny little guy. He is very small, know, dude. dude. A lot, All right, so a lot last, of talent. Last question for you, and this is the big one. Do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Oh, yeah. That's easy. Thank you. Give me an easy one. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we got him. Yes. And yes. then for Gabe, we have right. our second oh, set. Second set. Yeah. Those That's last his favorite Bible book, uh, book which uh, one was going to add. I, I find, the first one. I find oh, sometimes yeah. the second 10 questions, there's some that are more fun, I feel like. Right. I think they're, well, like I think they're just newer, okay. but also I think they're kind of, they're good conversation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one, what was your first job and your first car? My That's first, two questions. I, I think so too, but according to our list, it's not. Uh, my first <laughs> job was working in my grandparents' tortilla factory. Yeah. Um, cool. And I also threw newspapers at the same time. Like, so I was like 12 years old. You ever so, get them confused and throw a yes, tortilla throw on a someone's tortilla. doorstep? <laughs> extra, extra, <laughs> hey, read is, all what about is it. <laughs> so uh, I think the first thing I ever did was work in a tortilla factory. Nice. And then I started, uh, I've, I've had a job since I was 12. So, you know. That sounds made up. Right. That's and, and, and the first car? First car, I inherited my brother's, uh, when he went to college, I was a year behind him. 
So he drove us around before he left. And then when he went off to the University of Northern Colorado, I stayed in San Diego. And I got his 1979. Now back up, ladies. 1979. This is 1996. 1979 Burgundy Toyota. A Toyota Burgundy. Corona. Wow. Corona, not a Corolla. Not a Corolla. A, a Toyota Corona. Corona. The Corona. The Corona is right. like wow. the virus. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's what it means. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, okay. So what's your, um, this is my favorite question. What's your, what's your karaoke, karaoke song of choice? Oh, I don't have one. And I don't it can't do be karaoke. Lisa Loeb. When it I worked at DC Loeb. Comics in San Diego, we would go to the Ramada on the 8 Freeway in San Diego, and there was a little place called the Tickled Trout, like the size of this room. The uh, Tickled Trout. It was a, like a diviest dive bar in the universe. And people would scream their hearts out doing yeah. karaoke. Yeah. And I would just watch and laugh for like three hours because most of them were terrible. That's a, I like and to watch. I don't I like love watching it. I did. No. I don't, I've never done karaoke. I've never sung it. You know, I'm too yeah. good for karaoke, so yeah. it's never a fun that, Whatever, next. That's the concert. <laughs> That's the concert I want to see. I did it. I would do uh, the uh, Whitney Houston standard, I Will Always Love You. Will yeah, that was, you. it's an easy song to sing. Yeah. I, I need, yeah, to, I need sure. to be singing that. I can't sing, so I'll do one of the hardest <laughs> I'll, songs. I'll do <laughs> that or Four Non Blondes. What do you mean? She's okay, just the greatest yeah. female singer yeah. of all time. What do you mean? I think she'd go for The Gambler. Uh, uh, there you go. Number three. Through it. I could uh, do uh, Conway Twitty the Rose. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you nice. go. The devil came down. Uh, you're being sent to oh, AOC's gulags. Ooh. You're given a VHS player and television. This is almost possible. What's the one movie that you're bringing on VHS ooh. to watch in the VCR? Oh. Is it? Is it Indiana Jones and Last Crusade or Romance in the Stone? I don't know. Mm. Last Crusade's better. I think. I think you can't. Those are not the same. I think I'd give the nudge to Last Crusade. I think that so. or Blues Brothers. I don't. I can't okay. give a straight okay. answer. Okay, wow. I can see that. Yeah, those are some of my favorite movies. I love the we'll Last Crusade. So we'll Last, Last Crusade, Crusade is legitimately. If it's my really old movie. VHS, you could probably like record Last Crusade and then, and then and then get like and then get like a half an hour of the next right. <laughs> <laughs> before it cuts out. You get out. that first sequence. <laughs> yeah, of Romancing little, the Stone. So right. dangerous. Kind of steamy one. Video tape. Yeah, the steamy one. The videotapes though, they lose the magnetism and you they go away. Right. Yeah, that's true. What's what's to eat in the gulag? Uh, porridge. Oh, obviously. Uh, yeah. And the clothing situation. Like, I'm very tall. I need big shoes. Oh, uh, you're going to need uh, one of those jumpsuits. Uh, okay. So what's the dumbest thing you did as a teenager? Oh, boy. Oh, wow. uh, thank God I didn't get that question. <laughs> the dumbest thing I did as a teenager. <sighs> um, I would uh, get my Aunt Martha, rest in peace, to check me out of school fake sick. So I could go to my girlfriend's house in the middle of the day. My God, oh. that's not even that bad. Your girlfriend well, who was not in who was not in school. <laughs> no, <laughs> good no. point. No. Because she, she was older was... than you. Was she graduated? Uh, she was just dropped out. We just. I mean, there's a reason I had a kid at 18. Got so, it. You know that was. Got it. Turned out good. Uh -huh. My daughter and my son are great, but. Uh, Looking back, it probably wasn't a wise choice to be skipping school to, uh, you know. So she was skipping school too. She wasn't Who knows? just a all kinds of things were going on. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to know anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah so. Now we're to a wholesome topic. <laughs> you have a gospel tract and Ray Comfort. You can go back in history and convert any three people to Christianity. Who would you convert from Holy history? Smokes. Oh, um, with Ray Comfort. Well. The person that has done the most damage in recent history would be one uh, Barack Hussein Obama. Oh, yeah. So we would want to prevent that horrible damage he's had on the culture. And uh, he can pretend he's a Christian all he wants, but you know a tree by its fruit. Um, who yeah, else? Leave on. Some hot takes wow. here. Wow. Hey, hot takes. hey, the truth sets yeah. us free. It's true. I didn't make it true. So you, um, if you got him early enough, you might be able to stop him from fantasizing about making uh, love to men. <laughs> oh. yeah, that one I've got. We got to uncover that That's, thing. Let's uh, unwrap that I'd, onion. Just don't go paddle boarding at his house. <laughs> well, Ray Comfort would be there. Be like, have, you, have you have you ever looked with lust in your heart? Do you guys know Ray Comfort? No, I've heard the name. But oh, I you got to look him context. up. He's an evangelist. Australian you got yeah. street, street preacher. Yeah, 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 Kiwi. He's in New Zealand. Oh, yeah, I yeah, I said, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know who he is before I. Yeah, he's here. a Kiwi. <laughs> I didn't. I, yeah. I still. No, I mean he's out. famous online. He's got. To, yeah, you got to check him out. Um. Yeah. I don't know. It's. I mean, I, I'm, I'm serious, but halfway joking. I think it's too real of a question. I, I, mm. I I'll have to abstain from answering the rest of it because mm. I'm thinking some things now, and I. No, no, just I answer. Huh? I just Third answer. Answer. Take the risk. Muhammad. You know? Oh, it's not that. What are you going to lose? It's not about taking the <laughs> risk. Um, I mean, that yeah, was interesting. A, it's, yeah. it's the, well, that was going to just. That was one of mine. Bring yeah. yeah. I, I think mostly leaders, you know, because mm. leaders need to be a, of yeah. God because look what they can do to so many people. 
Yeah. So I would, I don't know, just more leaders that have, I, I guess you go for some of the huge communist leaders. So they wouldn't yeah, like, do, oh my you know, gosh, hundreds right. of millions dead with Mount communists. Saint-Tong. So Mount his son, sure. And, you know, maybe a, a, a Gaddafi. Mm. Maybe a Gaddafi really so I could have met my Libyan family. Mm. Ah. Instead of them murdering my grandfather and killing my dad's friends. And I've never yeah. been there because not a good time my, to my go. dad's on a kill list of Gaddafi's. So maybe stuff like that, I guess. Wow. You know? It's not a good time to go now. So yeah, That's world leaders because they have too much effect on people. So. Man, that's crazy. I'd say Tongue's a good one. I wouldn't. So if you could live in any book or fictional world, yeah, so you could actually just enter into that universe, What? which which one would that be? Hmm. I wouldn't want to go anywhere with magic and space and lasers and all that. There's too much danger. It's exciting to watch. I don't want to be involved. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll watch, Good but I'm not, I'm not getting involved with, and I hate Harry Potter anyway, but uh, <laughs> oh, it's so boring. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I've never season. watched a Harry Potter movie uh, or seen it. Or, well, I've never read a book. I never or seen read the book. I've seen little tiny bits of yeah. it. Never watched one. Wow, I'm the only one. I'm <laughs> the only one. <laughs> My son didn't like him. You're a wizard, Harry. Oh. Harry. Harry. Um, I I don't know. Just uh, again, go back to like Indiana Jones. Or, no, 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 no. <laughs> nope, I go. Go. I go into Hong Kong in the late '80s with Jean Claude Van Damme mm. and watch those illegal tournaments. You, so you don't think that's d- dangerous? Oh, I would just be one of the guys <laughs> in the crowd. And you know, there's always the guy that's like waving all the money, and everyone just yeah. hands him money to bet, and they keep track of what nobody's bet was. Yeah. I don't know how they do the betting at these illegal. It really tests. happens though. Like, like I'm, I not did it, I'm not Javai. I'm not I did it in Dubai. Thailand, and yeah. I was making bets. Um, really? on, on what you've Thai- been to an illegal kumite? No, it's not illegal. This oh. was legal with like oh. the, the, the Thai the... fighters, but then the money was coming out and because we're on video. It was not illegal. It was totally <laughs> not illegal. It was, it was it not. Was totally illegal. Illegal. I am an officer of the law. <laughs> you've been um, to the illegal kumite in Kowloon City in Hong Kong. I've, I've heard stories. I've heard stories. Uh, that's where I would go. I'd go to that's... Kowloon City in 1988 and watch Van Damme fight Chong Lee in Bloodsport. Wow. So that, oh yeah, that is a fictional world. Yeah, that's right. true. That is. Yeah. Then I'd get the heck out of it. Because he's more like a ballet dancer than an actual fighter, isn't he? Don't you ever talk don't about that. Don't you ever say that. <laughs> don't you dad do that. Was Watch what you say about him. <gasps> I would kick you in the face even blind. He I have would. a show Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Pacific on my YouTube channel, Search Gabe Tape. He's been a guest. I have. Frequent guest. He'll come yeah. back again. And we review 80s and 90s action I want to. I want to be on the show. You can be on the show. And the show is really just improv comedy. We yeah. watch. We talk about the whole movie. But we just made. You're, ta- you're too talented for that. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not funny enough. Uh, <laughs> number seven. If you were elected pope over all of Christianity, what's the first thing you would do? Pope yeah. of Christianity. Pope of. Christianity. Yes. There's a. There's no pope in there, it. It's, there it's all now, hypothetical. It's the whole oh. thing now. Yeah. So if Christianity had the a pope, guy. if there was one pope who was if in there charge. was if there was a Christian pope. <laughs> I uh, well, yeah. I hate to be a, like a, a party pooper, or wet blanket, but I think a pope over Christianity kind of is anathema to the idea of having a personal relationship with Christ. Mm-hmm. Me bossing people around in this and that. I think I'm supposed to be a guide and a leader as a father in my home, and then a man in society. Yeah. I lead, but I think being authoritarian and giving uh, orders from on down on high, like I have God's phone number and other people don't. I think that's the wrong way to look at it. So I know that's not a fun answer, but I. Yeah, yeah, a guy I would, who I wrote take, that question I had I to I wouldn't raise. take the job because I don't what think it's jerk. proper. But you kind of did take the job as as a, as a uh, father. I'm sorry. Well, that's this is my son. This is the only one I'll answer ever. That's so Kevin. Are you going to answer okay. on the phone? You okay, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> right, I have to call you back. I have to call you back, okay? He's in the middle of a okay, podcast. Bye. Uh, it's the only one that Hopefully rings. Near Nothing the else end will of ring. Podcast. Yeah. Hopefully <laughs> 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 oh, you're the end of the <laughs> Close to the end. Uh, no, that's so funny. So, but is there We're a not problem? not in the middle of the podcast here. <laughs> <laughs> is there a problem with Christianity that you would fix? Um, there's nothing wrong with Christianity. There, the people with are Christian. practicing. No, there's something wrong with humans that were flawed. Like people say, "Oh, Christians do this." So do Buddhists and Muslims and atheists. And everyone does all the same things. Got and it. And that's why we need Christ to redeem us. Ephesians verse two eight. We're not saved by works. We're saved by grace. Yeah. God died for us. So we're n- you could never do anything to get yourself into heaven. It ain't gonna happen. Got it. It took his sacrifice. So no, I I don't want to chastise Christians any more than anyone else. I, I think all human beings need to focus on loving God and letting him put his love through them out into the world. Dude. And not the postmodern idea of love where everything's about being nice. Like if you if your kid is crying, you have a little kid and they want cake for breakfast instead of a nutritious breakfast, and you give it to them because you don't want them to feel bad. You want to be that isn't love. That's actually hatred of your child. Yeah. So all this being nice, this virtue signaling, politically correct, it's actually narcissistic hatred. You're, You're doing it for yourself. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? So when you love people, there's a stern hand. You're afraid of the reaction. You know. All right. So what's one thing that um, everyone else likes that you don't get? 
Oh, seafood. It's disgusting. And if you like it, you're gross and you like stinky food. <laughs> I love how quickly he answered that. Yeah, that was... I was, that I was, was expecting Harry Potter after. Yeah, that's <laughs> oh, that Potter. goes without saying. Yeah. Seafood is oh, atrocious. Man. All of it? God hid that stuff under the water for a reason. <laughs> Think about it. Think answer. about it. It's a good answer. You can't breathe underwater. They're underwater. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's true. Dolphins can't breathe underwater either. That's, that's true. Saying. They can hold their breath for a long yeah. time. Uh, you're not supposed to eat a dolphin. What do you mean dolphins what's for? What's your favorite uh, fast food burger? Um, Dolphin burger. Uh, <laughs> I, oh, I'm going to say this for my friends over at the Ripperverse, the great Eric July. They're all Texans and they talk trash about Barbecue. in and out. Oh, and they talk about Whataburger being better than in and out. No. So I would defend in and out's honor. How dare you, Whataburger? How dare you? Uh, I'm, yeah, on, that is I'm on team Whataburger. Uh, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> Last one. Um, yeah. Okay, so you get to heaven. What's the first question that you ask God? Last question. <sighs> wow. So we're trying to end this podcast. You just give me a question. It's going to take an hour to think of. God, what's your favorite fast food I have, burger? <laughs> yeah. It's in and out better than water, in water, water I've lived burger. my whole life wondering this. My and favorite now fast food thing, to back up one question, is actually the brisket Shaking sandwich at Bucky's. Oh, that yeah. It's very good. Oh. Texan, huh? Great. I've had it. I've had it. It's very okay, good. Okay, it's delicious. Yeah. I don't, I have no idea. I mean, I would have to think and think and think. Yeah. Oh, what would I ask? Uh, what, 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 what? I have no idea. No idea. I have no idea. I mean, I, I get very serious when I think that, like, God, why wasn't I more loving? Or why wasn't I? And, like, obviously the answer yeah. is selfishness or whatever. But I have no idea. Yeah. But the I fact that you're standing there with God answers a lot of people's questions right by itself. Right. Yeah, I would say, why me? All right, well, ah. guys, thank oh, you. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. There it is. Um, why did the Broncos trade all those <laughs> picks for Russell Wilson and then it was an absolute disaster? You know, why he's like, he's we like haven't seen 2023 20, yet. Oh. He's like, you'll have to let that go to get in here. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, anyway, thank oh. you so much, guys, for tuning in. It's been awesome to have Gabe and, and Dean here yeah. on the show. Um, tune in next time. But uh, yeah, check out his stuff. Big Man Comics. Big check man him out comics. on YouTube. Order it now, Fo guys. Follow them both on social yeah, media. Follow yeah, follow Dean. Yeah. Uh, we didn't even get into his uh, Twitter. We'll do that next time. At Real time. Dean Kane. At Real but, Dean uh, Kane. Yeah, Real at Dean Real Dean Kane. Kane. Uh, he's got a Tell me what spicy. a terrible Superman I was when you disagree <laughs> us, with my political you, opinion. A spicy you are twist. the worst quarter Japanese Superman. I know. So, oh, my often. goodness. And yeah. we'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Dude, this is awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here. This is awesome. Honored to be here. Fun. Thank All you. Right. See you next time. Okay.